We've all dreamed of being heroes, haven't we? <laughs> Chosen by destiny. Oh, excuse me. Given sacred protection. Unrivaled ability. But do you know what your wishes are worth? <laughs> no more than the dust at your feet. Divine heroes walk among us. But you are not divine. And you never will be. We are mere mortals in a vast, untamed land. And yet, there is so much we can achieve. If the last hundred years taught us anything, it's that we humans are resilient. But survival is hard, and progress harder still. You will falter. You will fall. But you must rise again. And never forget, you need not journey alone. Find what this world has to offer. Venture outward. <clears throat> Excuse me, and oh, let me get the street up. And welcome. It is Thursday night. Hi, Nick. Good evening. How you doing, man? Yeah, I, uh, I may need to kill that element. I don't know why it's acting up today. That's actually a plug-in from Streamlabs. And something is clearly going a little bit haywire. See, is there a way I can, like, reset it? Uh, rename. I mean, I tried turning it off and on again. That didn't seem to help at all. As far as I can tell, Nick, you're utterly perplexed at, at the oddness of the chat. <laughs> hey, Evie, how you doing? Cool. Evie 23. Best Evie on the internet, certified, validated, and confirmed by the gaming lawyer. How you doing, Evie? You watched the Lord of the Rings Extended Editions between today and yesterday? So, you basically probably had them on during all of your waking hours. What What is that? Uh, maybe not quite, but we, aren't you looking at about a 12 to 13 hour runtime on those? And there's stone! Stone doubles the motion. We have a, a quorum? I don't know. Hey, Stone, what's up, man? Ah, uh, so Nick, I, I've got a question for you. I, there's a massive, there's a massive sale right now on, uh, the hell is that? Not Battlegrounds, what's the, <laughs> Fantasy Grounds. Uh, the Roll20 alternative. And I can't remember, I think you said you've used Fantasy Grounds. And I've, I haven't thought about DMing for a while, but it's cheap enough that if I got, I could get an ultimate license, then it'd be easier for me to sell other people that I'd want to play with on playing if they don't have to pay anything to do it remotely. <clears throat> a several hour endeavor. Ooh, Bioshock. Yeah, an oldie but a goodie. That's good fun. So, yeah, so I just noticed that about, I don't know, a half hour or an hour before the stream. And I think its sale's gonna be going. Steam had a sale for it, but then they said it, it Steam doesn't keep it updated and stuff, so I thought, I, I wonder if the actual website will have us be on sale too. So I went to the actual website and the sale's even deeper. So I was like, hmm, it's like 70, 
four dollars seventy five dollars for an ultimate an ultimate version like with the game and the ultimate license upgrade so i was it's got me it's got me thinking i think i'll be stewing over it for the next few days because i was looking at like rule books everything's on sale right now and you could get the bundle with all of the the rule type books even the more obscure ones and that bundle is i think it's like around 90 bucks it's got you know player's guide dungeon master's guide all the like dungeon monster manual folio coast <laughs> gold coast not the gold coast sword coast adventures guide whatever Well, I think um, Roll20 also has a, an, a like a straight out purchase option as well. But yeah, I'm I'm thinking about it. What I'm thinking I might do is every weekend my actually my old D&D group from from high school. Not every weekend, but they've tried to meet up every weekend. Doesn't always happen. And I've made it to a couple of them. And I think most of them are going to be too busy. But I was like, I might farm the idea out and then figure out if the game, the friends that we play D&D with would, would be interested. If I was like serious about getting a, like a well-run online campaign going, because even our board game friends, like I know the guy that I grew up with would, likes D&D, but I don't know if they've got like the, and I think they're in a campaign already and they, they're they busy people otherwise. So I don't know if they've got like a, an interest in doing more DD. I also don't know if his wife is that much into DD. So, but I'm seeing uh, shopping around and see who might be interested. So, and Nick, I know you got a busy schedule, but but uh, you would be on my list of considerations for people that I would bring into a campaign. <laughs> yeah, except on Saturday. Huh. I have to think, yeah, I have to keep that in mind. Because I think Saturday is like a is like a common day for people to want to do stuff. Uh, Evie, on the system that I'm talking about, it's it's a program and it's everything is digital and everything is in the program. So like I have Dungeons and Dragons and it's a considered a pen and paper tabletop role playing game traditionally. So if you normally when people talk about playing Dungeons and Dragons, they're like the real or legit actual Dungeons and Dragons. They're talking about buying a, a couple of rule books a rule book or two and sitting around a table making a character sheet on a piece of paper and sitting around a table with dice and pencils and keeping track of how many hit points you have and all your stats and all that other stuff uh but fantasy grounds is is a uh, sort of the main competitor to roll 20. roll 20 seemed like it offered better free options, so it got a really big foothold in terms of online people playing online. Um, but Fantasy Grounds is a, is a competitor. It seems like it might be a little more polished. And uh, so I'm taking a look at that. And both of those, though, if you like if you have all the physical books and then you buy into this, you can you can you have to buy the books again if you want them to be integrated into the program. So the programs come with like Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition rules set in it already, so it can run like die rolls and stuff like that. But um, if you want the actual books integrated, which includes like character creators and all that other stuff, uh, you have to buy them again. So it's not like if you own the paper version, you can be like, well, now that I'm getting this, can I get like somehow proof of purchase and get it in there too? It's like, no, you gotta buy it again. Did I say Dead by Daylight, Maxi? I better check, because I was thinking no, I didn't. Maxi, I was thinking about Dead by Daylight. They just released the Silent Hill chapter. And I was like, hmm. <clears throat> I ended up running out of time. But just to, just to, like, tease myself, I was thinking about when I got off work, launching it and playing it. Um, but I just didn't, I didn't have time. I was talking with my wife for a while, and then I was eating dinner, and yeah. But I've heard he's a good killer. I watched a video about him the other day, and he, he it seems like pretty interesting. I actually, a couple months ago, bought everything current, like right up to and before 
the Silent Hill chapter. So there's actually at this point, I think two or three killers I've never even tried before. Like, I've never even launched the game since they released because it's been a while. Um, and this week I actually got something charged me up for like a ho getting into a horror game mode a little bit too. So I really started thinking about it again. I think it was talking about horror stuff <laughs> during my last stream and playing that clip from my six-year-old G-Law used to <laughs> listen to the record player. <clears throat> I got thinking about oh, my love of horror again. Uh, let me let me look over here. Um, you haven't done a campaign. Oh, Nick, I was I was also gonna ask you how the Princes of Apocalypse campaign went. I know you were working on it. I don't know if you guys ever finished that, um, but I know you were a ways. You were ways into it. I can't remember if you told me you finished it. But I was just curious how that went. Game from noon to 7 or 8 in the evening, Eastern Standard Time. Okay. So. I don't think I would get... If I got it going on a Saturday, it'd probably be in the afternoon. And... Not... I don't know. It depends on who got playing. So, but I, I know we're like when we get together to play in, in person, usually we start really conking out around nine or 10. Like we might play a little later than that, but we're, our energy is gone. It's not like before. So we don't, I probably wouldn't want to start a game too late, but I think maybe Sunday we, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it actually ever gets that far. Cause I could, we could work a schedule that could work for everybody who's hopefully work for everyone who's involved, <laughs> who's, who's interested. Uh, but because ideally, I think in real life, people need to limit sessions to, you know, maybe four, three to four hours. But the way that I would want to play D&D &D would be to like start in the or like around make me right after lunchtime and then just go until people are over it. Like that's how I used to play it. Be We might start around lunchtime and then play until midnight. But Sort of like until everyone's like, yeah, I think we need to stop right now. We need to eat. And after we eat, we'll decide. And then maybe we would and maybe we wouldn't go back to it. <clears throat> yeah, can't just buy exactly. But the thing that's cool, you can't buy a digital version or a physical copy and get a digital version. So, yeah, it's the same principle. I know there are people that ask like, hey, if I already own it, since like it's a wizard of the coast is getting my money, they got my money already. Can we just... I just have it like in that game too. It's like, no, you gotta buy it again. But the thing that's good, like this edition that I'm that I'm looking at is like if you play it for free, you can only play a game run by somebody with the ultimate edition. And there's a standard edition that's a lot cheaper. Like right now it's on sale for 20 bucks, the standard edition. And Anyone with a standard edition can play with anyone else. So they can run a game, they can build a game, they can be a player in someone else's game, and so on. But a free player can't join. If you're a dungeon master and you have the standard version, a free player can't join. And I think that's a big selling point of the Ultimate Edition is if you if you make friends or whatever and they're like, oh man, yeah, I love, you know, like especially long distance or people like, yeah, oh, I totally love to play D&D again. I, you know, maybe we should figure something out and you're like hey just buy this program for 39.95 and then you can play Dungeons and Dragons they'll be like what I don't know if I want to play it like that much <laughs> so that's where they, you get an ultimate license for like 72 bucks and then there's a uh, then there's the the unity edition which is even more expensive uh but it's uh, it's like the new version of where things are going so I was I was like, if I'm gonna spend 70, is it worth doubling down and just getting the uh, Unity version? Uh, but the deep, the sale, it's only 10% off the Unity version. So it's like 135 bucks. Whereas it's a much deeper sale on the classic version. So, so it's like 75 or something. So, and if you buy the classic and then up the like classic ultimate and upgrade to the Unity ultimate at some point, you get, I think, you don't, 
You get like a discount. I think it's like a 40% discount. So, I don't know. I got a lot to think about in the next few days because I got all into maybe running a D&D campaign mostly before I started working. And I still carried off, carried over some of that enthusiasm after I started my job. But then after a couple attempts at trying to get a local group together kind of fell apart, I just stopped and like just kind of moved on. But now, now I'm thinking about it again. Now that I'm seeing like, hey, I could get, if I could get the ultimate edition, then anyone who wanted to play wouldn't have to buy anything. I might think about it. It, Stone, it's been 30 years since, well, what? Yeah, it's probably been about almost 30 years, 25 years. I stopped really running a campaign when I was about 18. So, like after we graduated high school. And after high school, we did periodically play, but it was like maybe once every six months for a year or two. And then everyone started going to college. And I think at one point, after like a four year gap where we'd all been to college, we all, my original group got together one more time after having not played for four or five years. We'd, we'd blew the dust off of our old characters and I made up an adventure and they all came over and we had a late night, like overnight D&D session and kind of, it was like a sort of like a nostalgia thing, like where are they now type of thing. It was kind of fun. You're still running it. Your group is level six now. You've been running. It. Okay, so you've still been doing it regularly. Um, digital is handy on the DM. And you do that online. Do you Now, you mentioned that you find an, uh, an iPad helpful for running that stuff. Do you, do, you use, do you use the iPad when you're running the online game? Or is that is that like if you're going to run an in-person game? <clears throat> Now I can't remember if you if you do it in person, but you still use Fantasy Grounds. Your husband plays a game like that on Sundays. You remember him telling he plays D&D online with some buds. OK, or D&D online. There's also an MMO called D&D online. <laughs> um, you were 35. OK. I got super, super excited last year. And yeah, I saw that, Max. It's true. No, no, no. But I'm glad you appreciated my six-year-old G. Six-year-old G La loves scary records. <laughs> uh, I played the MMO a little bit. It was interesting, but I never like got heavily invested into it. Um, but it was definitely unique. It wasn't like WoW clone by any means. It's still out there, I guess. But yeah. Five uh, E is a good addition version to get back into. Yeah. Well, I've. I've basically learned 5e. I I don't let me see. I don't think I ever got I don't think I ever got the Dungeon Master's Guide, which is or did I? I was almost sure that I did, but I was looking and I didn't see it. Maybe I bought it and stuck it somewhere. I haven't really looked cracked one of those books for a year now. But I was I was pretty impressed with fifth edition. It was funny with me and my old DD group, we were talking about like, oh, does anyone play DD anymore? And really only my one friend that we we uh, we met for board games, he still plays. I guess one of the other ones plays sometimes, too. He's got his own group. And we got talking about comparing like how because they hadn't played. Some of them hadn't played fifth edition. And I ended up becoming like this vocal advocate for it. There are all these features that I just there are certain features that I that are a lot different, especially I was touting the magic system where in old school D&D, especially at lower levels, like you could only memorize like one spell or two spells a day and then you had to sleep for eight hours and memorize them again. And like when you cast that, like your magic missile did four points of damage, you lost that spell till you you rested eight hours and could then you could cast it again one more time the next day. So you if you wanted to be a powerful wizard for basically the first, you know, first two years of your career playing Dungeons and Dragons, like slowly, painfully leveling that character up. If you if you didn't play all the time, it would be like, oh, God, I'm level four. I can I can cast missile magic missiles twice now. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not wasn't that bad, but it's pretty bad. And in the meantime, you can't fight barely. You got no hit points. 
all you can use is like a slingshot and a dagger, which you could barely, you have no strength, and so, and you, so you can't do shit with. <clears throat> and one thing I thought was cool, and I think this started in 4th edition a little bit, but 5th edition really seems to flesh it out, where magicians or magic users have certain spells that they can just cast at will, like, and some of them are combat spells. A lot of them are like illusion type spells where they can do weird, like come up with, like when you think about someone who does magic, you think about, oh, what, what are they going to do? What can they do? Like what mysterious thing is going to happen? And, and it, it, there's all this sort of flexibility to create that kind of like, well, you have certain, you have within certain reason, you can create various effects. What do you want to, what do you want to do? Yeah. Where the cantrips. In fifth edition, I, was, I know cantrips were available before, <clears throat> but they were zero level spells that they still had memorization slots. You just had more of them and they were basically useless. It'd be like, yeah, you cast this and uh, you do one point of damage. If you if it hits, you do one point of damage. It's like, huh? why? Why is that good? <laughs> I'd rather just yell harsh words at the guy. <laughs> Mage has always been your favorite stone. I I always <clears throat> excuse me. I always liked the spells, and I liked when you got higher level. And some of the older editions, when you got higher level, there were some pretty insane spells. So Mage Mage was a character that if you wanted to be a mage, and you stuck with it, and you leveled them to the higher the higher levels, you're gonna face melt the entire dungeon with your spells. Like you could become the fighter who was outshining you for the first eight levels. All of a sudden it's gonna look like crap next to you when, when things go down. <laughs> <clears throat> well, yeah, the, is he, <laughs> Stone. The, yeah, the cantrips would be useful for, for role-playing purposes. Like you want to achieve a certain effect. Yeah, I can see that. Now that you're online, you still use the iPad since all the info is still in there. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see, use a program for Fight Club. You invited an adventure back in October and remember last year for the first part of it. At the table. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. So you're not using like roll twenty then on your iPad when you're playing at a table. Yeah, now you just know them and you can cast them basically whenever you want. And there's certain base attack spells that you know, would hit comparably to a decent, like a fighter weapon. Except you're a mage and you can cast them. Or, or like if, equivalent to if you could shoot bows. They basically made it so you have these baseline repeatable spells that you can cast that make you continuously useful. It's not like, oh, I cast my magic missile and I did 1d4 plus 1 damage to the goblin. And... Now I'm just going to hang in the back behind all the real fighters until we can sleep tonight and I can memorize Magic Missile again to use tomorrow. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, hold on, my eyes! My eyes! What's that bright light? There's a bright golden light spreading out across the horizon. Who is that? I see a figure among the bright golden stars. It's Ava. Ava's in the stars. I don't know. It's being weird. Hey, but their stones look very happy to see you in the chat. He said your name like eight times. I see it of turning it off, but it's also kind of amusing, too. And you could still sort of follow what's going on in the chat. I use Streamlabs so as a Streamlabs plugin, so something's going screwy with my Streamlabs connection. If it happens again next week, I might look for another alternative. But I only use the in, the overlay chat on, like, welcome screens and stuff anyway, so... I don't know. <sighs> Some sort of glitch. When you're at the table, you use minis and draw out maps. Oh, I got you. Okay. So you just use the, the iPad for, like, a reference? Okay, the Fog of War. Oh, really? Hey, Majros, by the way. Okay, so, yeah, it's just one of those things we'll, we'll, that they'll fix it. And 
By the time I stream again, it probably should be fixed. Hopefully. <clears throat> oh gosh, 25 minutes, no game yet. I hope I don't get any angry, angry comments. The, a, uh, an expansion, a DLC just launched for Outward today. So I looked at it and it was like, basically it's, it unlocks a new area and a new faction you can join and it's a hard area and it's basically not for a noob. So I was like, eh, it's not on sale or anything. So I'll wait, but the base game's on sale on Steam. I forget what it is, but now it's on sale on Steam. I <laughs> secretly loving it. There you go. See how that works? They had to turn off their bots because it would just keep spamming. Oh my gosh, really? So it counted as uh, the commands counted as going over and over again. <laughs> oh no. <clears throat> okay, yeah, the the combat and everything. The last time that I actually played in a D and D campaign was in the early two thousands. It was like two thousand two, two thousand three. And I was just a player with someone else running and he ran it on a laptop and he took care of a lot of that stuff on his laptop. And I remember thinking like, I mean, he'd have the dungeon master screen and books and stuff too. But I remember thinking like, oh man, I, yeah, I bet you could find all sorts of ways to make it. Like he had a laptop that you could make that work to run a game for you. Don't like it. Come back later. Oh, oh. <laughs> Wait, what happened here? Well, now it's alternating between... It's alternating between Raedros and Ava. So it got confused. <laughs> They're just having a back and forth. And, and Maedros' line is, then it repeats that. <laughs> ah, that's fun. So, what else? What else? My week's been going good. Work's been normal. Um, not. It's been a de like just sort of a normal, decent week. Like all things, all told. Uh, I found myself surprised to discover that I am enjoying Persona 4 Golden on PC. It, it it snuck onto Steam two days ago for 19.99, and I'd heard so much buzz about the Persona series for so long, and I'm like, oh, it looks like kind of I'm not like anime, like the super. I just don't. It doesn't look like my thing. But then I saw it was 19.99. I'm like, maybe I should. So I, read, I watched some videos about it, and everyone who, most of the people that have gotten into it like they love it and they, a lot of them swear that four is the best one in the series and i was like all right you know what it's and there are people that are saying like yeah normally i'm not into this sort of thing but i gave it a trot and i actually turns out i surprised i was surprised i ended up liking it uh <laughs> no one's no one read what i said but what did you see before that <clears throat> Anyone who belongs here knows that we chat for at least half an hour before gameplay. Don't like it. Come back late. Oh, okay. See, we got spammed. And uh, it just looked like you were referring to the re the repetition. But there was, there was a larger context. And you were responding to what I said. About an hour 29 minutes. So yes, EV23. Uh, I just was like, I just... I ended up spending an hour watching videos trying to decide if I like it or not. If I might like it or not. And I was like, if if I'm this sort of torn up over a game at this point that almost everyone swears is awesome and it's under 20 bucks, I should tr try to just buy the damn thing and try it. So I bought it and I downloaded it and started playing it and I found like, yeah, I, I was like, oh, Jet, it's like anime high school students. Like, that's not. That's going to feel really weird. And but I got playing and I actually got into it. Like, I, I. I relate to the story and I like the characters and the stuff that's going on that's kind of dark. 
that's giving rise to like the peril and the plot line actually feels like it's engaged me like the stuff that's creepy creeps me out like honestly creeps me out and because it's sort of like about a, a, a little bit like a murder mystery thing going on and the circumstances around the deaths are, are kind of spooky so <laughs> too much bone meal although look at all that bone meal unfortunately uh there's a spoon but there's no you can't get my custom emoji into uh into streamlabs chat we'll see yeah is it is it redundant nick i just know that like the pitch of it being oh yeah you're a high school student and it's like a dating sim and i'm like oh god i don't so far it hasn't really been touched on that but i'm like i don't I don't want to play six year, a 16 year old trying to hook up with other 16 year olds. That just, I, I really, it just weirds me out to be like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to be like, going to bang all the chicks in my class, the other 16 year olds. I don't think, I don't know if it goes there, but the, the concept of it's a life simulator, high school life simulator dating, like social dating sim and a JRPG. Really, the the, oh, the pitch has turned me off for years. <laughs> uh, don't, don't get your hopes up, Evie, but who knows? I didn't think I would be into Persona. Um, but because I've tried other sort of anime-ish type things and that are even more like strictly fantasy-like and I guess, uh, there's some of the style in anime just doesn't mesh well with me just feels too goofy but this is actually like i like the character i think that's what it is i like the characters and i'm identifying with the with like this the situation that they're in so but what i, I just i miss comment and I'll, i just look up and i see ava say i like balls <laughs> the balls are fun to play with you're just testing to see if i'm paying attention ava now, now it's been five minutes since she said that, and I'm just like, what's, what's she, what's she talking about? Oh, Maxie started it. He just said balls. Yeah. Probably just to test the echo effect. So, anyway, but yeah, so actually right now, for the last two days, and, and probably when I have more private spare time to play games, I'm probably going to keep playing... Uh, Persona 4. So I'm kind of sucked into it. Like last night, I actually had to. I had to make myself turn it off at 10. So I so I would could go to bed. But I kept because it's like you do one day and then you do the next day and the next day. And you come to end, the end of a day and it's like, Ooh, what's going to happen? Certain things happen at night. And you're like, oh, what's if I I'm going to save, but I want to see what's going to happen. <laughs> it wasn't your fault. It's OK, Ava. Uh, and Maxie just wanted to see a bunch of balls. And so, so he did. Courtesy of, uh, courtesy of Streamlabs. Streamlabs provided all the balls anyone could possibly want to see. Thank you, Streamlabs. But yeah, um, I, I, but I just, I pretty much decided early on with, uh, Persona that it's super story heavy and I would not want to stream that game. That's definitely a game to play like while I'm paying strict attention to it because it'd be one of those where either I'd have to ignore the chat or I'd have to only half pay attention to the story. And neither of those sounds good to me. Like not paying attention to the story defeats the whole reason I've got I've like really been surprised by the game and and then if I'm just gonna play it and ignore chat what's the point why am I streaming it in the first place All right yeah look, <laughs> look at all those look at all those balls <laughs> uh. 
I hope you're not in any kind of real trouble. I see Ava sitting there and her kids walk by and they're like, why is everyone... Why is it have you spamming that you like balls? She's like, I, I didn't... I didn't type it. I didn't type it 15 times. It's like, well, according to that chat log, you did, Ma. Like, we don't need to see this shit. It's... It's like... Prime time, kid awake time. We don't... We don't want to think of our mom this way. <laughs> no. Anyway, but yeah, I was still having fun with Outward. Um, I one reason why I think I I front load with this game a little more than maybe usual with chat is because once I get going in the game, the, you can't pause the time, how the time progresses. Like there's no pause button, so once it's going. I'll still talk to chat and stuff, but there's a little bit of a commitment to paying attention to some extent. Like, so you don't just sit there and walk back and forth starving to death and I'm not paying attention, that sort of thing. <laughs> Ava, did I get you in trouble now? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I think, too, from what I call, your kids are old enough that, yeah. He to hear see the word balls may not be the most shocking thing in the world. But here comes here comes the, the bronze, silver, and gold. <laughs> uh so but yeah. I I did play a bit more outward since last week. It's sort of been like the game I've been playing for the most part, and I don't know. I like it. I'm not I, the more I play it, the more I like it, but I'm not like, wow, this game is the best thing ever. Some people are like that with this game. <laughs> what? See, here's the thing, too, is, is Stone entered a comment about big balls, and it never entered, at least for me, it never showed up in the actual YouTube chat, but it, but it showed up all over in the Streamlabs chat. <laughs> he tires of sitting in his balls by accident. Oh my gosh. Okay, now that's one. La that, that's one last story I need to tell about the one thing that did happen this week that's a little traumatic. Then I'll play the game. I promise. For all of you who are clamoring for the game and are like, "Damn it, I want to see more outward." What are you doing? What are you doing, G Law? Talking like this, but sitting on balls. This is all right. So. We recently bought a stationary bike because the gym's closed. And when I was when I started exercising by walking, doing extended walks, I started having ankle problems. My doctor was like, yeah, walking's great, but when you're fat, you, you can't walk that much. It's going to hurt your ankles. So you got to find to ride a bike or something that's better. So I was like, OK, so I was like, like we, we had a gym membership and I'll go do the bike or whatever and then COVID hit right when we got the gym memberships and the gym's all closed and 10 seconds of grand pile preteen and teen <laughs> I don't know fuck shit, fuck, fuck shit and arsehole are the words at the moment alright well as long as I'm not going to get in trouble and I'm not going to get you in trouble Ava that's what, that's what matters I don't want to cross any lines here it's not a family-friendly stream, but when family is present, you know, I like to be curious. So, I, but I think of the options you just gave us, the, the use of the word balls is far less offensive. So, and it's, I, I don't know, the the more inappropriate, like, like, the number of times that balls have been introduced during this chat and then echoed by Streamlabs, it's just made it even better. So we got the stationary bike and the big issue with it is like we got it a couple weeks ago and I got in a good habit of of doing like two days on one day off of half hour rides. And but we're both having trouble with saddle soreness, which is like even if you're in shape, saddle soreness could be an issue if you're not used to riding a bike. But it's probably exacerbated when you're, you're 
it's like carrying another person on your back worth of weight. It may be, for me, you know, maybe not the heaviest person, but still. It, it, there's more of me than there should be being held up by a couple little points around my butt and my groin and my taint. It's holding all my weight. It's, it's been a little uncomfortable. We'll just put it at that. Youngest sitting here looking sheepish because he knows that I know that he said, oh, oh, he's been called out, Ava. That's really embarrassing when they're, when it's like, mom, I'm not supposed to talk about that. Like, no, I don't. <laughs> Hashtag poor taint. Exactly, Maxie. So, and the thing is, is like, as the days went on last week, every time I, like, I think at a certain point, I actually, I don't know if I bruised something inside that area or what, but it got to a point where every time I got back on the bike, it started getting a little worse the next day and the next day until Sunday. I was just like, holy crap. I felt like I squished all my tubes inside. Like everything's fucked up now. And, uh, yeah, it was like, like taking a pee was a little bit of a delicate maneuver. Like didn't quite feel right anymore. All the, like I ended up getting like stomach cramps and stuff. And I'm just like, dude. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty harrowing. It was bad enough that, um, like it was, it kind of kept me from sleeping well that night. And I was still feeling messed up in the morning and I actually took Monday off work. So that's, you know, that balls got really smashed. I, now I also, I might've just, it could be coincidentally I ate something that gave me cramps or whatever, but I really been talking all week about how I got my, I got my groin smashed and it, and it like busted up my, I, I, I squished my balls so hard that it busted up my insides. <laughs> I don't know if that could happen, but that's what it feels like. And Ron Swanson's burger put ketchup if you like, just farted. That's okay. Alright. So, that was my last story I'm sure all you wanted to hear. Was about how I, I crushed my balls so badly on the stationary bike. That, uh, I couldn't pee right for a couple days. And all my tubes got, all my tubes got crushed. <laughs> Ah, uh, I see. I see there's more chat. There's more chat coming through. On, uh... Ah, uh, that's weird. It's making it onto Streamlabs, but not on here. Other oh, three. 15, 9, and 5. Oh, yeah. How's your new place going, Stone? Every, is everyone, uh, everyone settling in? They marked their territories off? <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm pulling the trigger, guys. I'm pulling, Matus! It's Matus out there! Oh, hey, Matus. How you doing, man? 45 seconds of gameplay. So, Matus has, uh, has it been, I don't know if I've talked to you a lot lately. I think I've seen you around, but I, 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 I've been meaning to ask, like, has the pandemic at all eased up your job? Like, did work get cut back at all? Or it occurred to me that the pandemic might have represent could in the right circumstances be a well needed, a well needed relief for you. <laughs> all right. Come on, game. Register. Hook. Hook it. There we go. Good job, OBS. Finding the game. It's such a good job. Working more than before. Oh, crap. Now I feel like I shouldn't ask. So not only is everything terrible, that my job has got, got a bit more stressful during the pandemic because m more stuff fell onto us and there were more problems to address because of the pandemic. 
and all oh shit oh no you had to use vacation you kind of worked anyway on the three days off. oh my god i'm sorry man i'm sorry i know every time i hear every time you talk about your job remember when you first got it and you're like Ugh. Yeah, it's, it feels like a step up, but man, I think I might have bit off more than I could chew. And I was like, oh god, that doesn't that doesn't sound fun. But So right now, you for those who were here last week, I've upgraded to more kind of gross looking armor. And, but I do have like a, a knight's helmet, which is good. And I got a found. I did some exploring and found some cool stuff. And I have this bigger backpack now that's got a special stick for the lantern to go over my head, which is pretty cool. Yeah, the 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 clothing. I do well. This is uh. You could call this the murder hobo set. I mean, that's like a classic D and D video game thing, where when you play a game, you just so you're murder hobos. You just wander around killing people, and this guy literally looks like if they were gonna have a Wikipedia entry for murder hobo, you just take a screenshot of this dude. <laughs> uh, I I frequently avoid bandits, Nick. See, the reason is is because. You don't gain experience for fighting them. So if you're going to fight them, the questions that you should be asking yourself are, are they going to have anything on them that would make it worthwhile for me to fight them and take some damage? So what my plan now is... Oops. Can I zoom out? I want to go to this other zone. I want to go to the other cities. And just kind of establish myself. And because they have trainers there and stuff. So that's my overall goal. But I can I could fight guys now. If you want to see me fight somebody. <laughs> more more pyramid head. Let's see. Let me get my uh Here we'll start off with a nice Oh. All right. Ah, uh, that I did not take that very skillfully. So, I got a little bit hurt. Let me see. Let me get some uh let me get a bandage going. Yeah, I lost like 60% of my health in that fight. Let me get my backpack on before I start looting stuff so I can put it in there. Yeah, that's the thing about this game too is the combat is hard and it's partially hard because it's a little bit floaty and also it's just meant to be challenging. Uh, and if you're not, if you're not somewhat good at it, and also, if you're not paying really close attention to what you're doing, uh, it's easy to get thrashed really quick. Well, I was I was letting them, like, literally, Nick, they were tearing... That was a brutal amount of hits that I took. For this game, the fact that they kept hitting me over and over again, and I wasn't dodging or anything, I was just sort of standing in the middle of it, I'm surprised I didn't die. If I had been the armor I was wearing earlier in the game, I I would have been dead in the first five seconds of that encounter. Army of Dark Raid. Oh, shit. it's a Dark Raid. Army of Dark Raid. Welcome Raiders. Welcome to my super cool outward stream. Welcome Keir Armstrong. Welcome Kyle Herman. How you doing, Kyle? I'm doing. I'm fine. Doing good. How are things going? And army of army of me raid. It's army of you raid. Dark Jake 13. Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing, man? 
Hey, hey, congrats on your, uh, I saw you, you got like a massive donation night there that I saw you post on Twitter. Dude, that's insane, man. We had like over $800 in one stream. That was pretty amazing, dude. Um, let me see. Let me loot. What am I doing? I get the arrows. I'll take, I'll take that stuff. I don't need another bow. I'll get the swords just to break them down. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I'm just, uh, playing a, a, well, this game is sort of mellow. Oh, I'll take all that stuff. Leather, arrows, and salt for cooking? These are all amazing things for me to have. And I was going to eat something, too. Let's see. Meat stew. What's going bad? Alpha sandwich. That sounds delicious. The meat stew is going to go bad first, so let's do that. Uh, let's have another... Another bandage. I really got... I really got kind of beat up there. Well, that was before the gameplay started, but I did... I did have to postpone the gameplay just a little bit while I provided an account about my testicular misfortune that occurred uh, from riding my stationary bike with a little too much zeal. I guess we'll, we'll put it there. Hey, Kyle, this is a... An open world RPG. It's by an indie studio. Um, it focuses a lot on survival elements. So hunger, thirst, uh, sleep. You have to sleep. Uh, it's yeah. And there's a lot to do with the, like your carrying weight. Like my weight, my backpack. This is a pretty big backpack. It's got a 75 pound limit. Uh, but if you're wearing a backpack and you're trying to fight, like, here's what happens if I try and roll. It's like, ugh. You're locked into that roll. It takes forever. So there's a, there's a mechanic where when you get into a fight, like, this is your traveling gear, but you don't fight with this on. So you drop it. And then you get into the fight. And you can move a million times better. And when you're done, you go back and pick up your bag again. Oh, I can turn that off. You probably didn't need... I was probably covering it up with the raid symbol. Oh, now I'm thirsty. See? Tells you. So, yeah. I got a raid from Dark Jake, Ava. <laughs> I just closed down everything. Yeah, a, a testicular mis misadventure. Uh, Dark Jake. So someone bought, brought up squished balls. So then I just, I, I drew out the story a little bit. The basic story was, I, we got a new stationary bike and I was, like, I, I've been riding it almost every day for a half hour a day, but it's been really hard on, because I'm a little bit heavy and I'm not used to riding a bike. So, yeah, it's a little hard in the nether regions and the last few days that I rode it, I think I irritated something, and so each day, my my balls area and the surrounding areas became progressively more and more pissed off. Until Sunday, it hit it hit a point where I considered that I had a borderline crotch injury. Yeah, no, it was nothing like that. It was nothing like that, but it was just like. The whole rest of the day, I'm like, oh, everything feel it doesn't feel right. Like nothing feels right. So, all right, I'm gonna I'm going to a new zone. Let me see. Here we go. Toxic swamp lit by flowers and fireflies, dotted with dinosaurs' nests and gro glowing undead. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, I know. When I first started the game, I'm like, I'm going to talk extra long before I start the game because you can't pause it. And the, so the whole time you're playing, the clock is ticking. The guy's getting hungrier. He's getting sleepier. So I can't just wander back and forth, like go into a dungeon and walk back and forth for an hour. 
So I've never been in this zone before. My balls! What's going on over here? Drink rancid water. Uh, well, you know what? I will gather some rancid water. And, because I am running a little low on water. I get some, uh... I need to find a tree. Is this a skeleton? Sometimes skeletons have things on them. I will not call off my dinosaur friends for you. But what's this thing? A marshmallow! It's from Star Trek V, remember? Anyone remember Star Trek V? Where Spock studies Earth culture and they go camping and he's like, I believe the next ritual involves the camping trip is to roast a marshmallow. All right, so presumably... Now, they also don't give you a map marker. But I think I came in here. Oh, gosh. It's a long road. The city I want to go visit is up here. So, all right. We're just going to keep straight on the road. Last of Us Part 2 unlocks in an hour. Oh my gosh! Hey, Dark Jake, I was just mentioning earlier some of my news this week. Uh, Persona 4 Golden released on Steam. They like snuck it in there in the middle of the week. I didn't even know it was coming. I had people have been talking about that series forever. I know you you played it. So I bought it. I didn't know if I'd like it. You know, I'm always like, eh, anime. I'm not, I don't know. High school, playing high school students. I got it. And uh, I've really been actually enjoying it. For the last couple days, that's made the main game I've been playing. Yeah, I heard they were del delaying Cyberpunk. I'm a little torn. Like, yeah, maybe. I would rather them delay it than release it like in sh like some messed up half-baked form that's going to ruin the game but if they take forever and it's screwed up that's gonna be a problem oh hey joss oh, okay well didn't you didn't you play five and then they had that thing where they were striking people who were playing footage like certain footage from the game i seem to recall something like that happened but it are you talking about that and i get i think my my takeaway was that you'd been a big fan of the series until that happened Yeah, I prefer they take their time. It was punk and it was CD red. It taught me what it was the high. Thanks. Thanks for that, Matus. I even got a little melody in there for Nick, because Nick loves that song. What time is it in game? Oh, it's starting to get starting to get late. Road's getting a little hard to follow, too. Do I have a campfire kit on me? Okay, I don't want to drink that water, but I, if I'm going to see if I boil it, if it'll get rid of the poison or if it's just like, it's fucked. Let's gather some wood. I don't think I'm going to make camp yet. I have like a tent now too. It's actually kind of, it's kind of cush. It's not a luxury tent, but it's better than like an improvised sleep sleeping roll that I've been using. Um. Let me craft my little campfire kit so that'll be ready to go. Oh, you were going to play it. I don't know. I feel like it's somewhat, it's a more common thing with Japanese. Like Nintendo has a reputation for being a little weird with their IPs. Uh, and Final Fantasy, didn't Final Fantasy also like, they got a little weird with striking people down who were showing certain things from Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, it could, it could just be 
that, yeah, they're just not, I don't know. It seems, it seems like it happens more with some, with like, you know, Japanese IP owners. Like, they're just not quite as on board sometimes with freely letting everyone use their IP. Okay, now I think I'm, I feel like I'm losing my way. Let's get back to the marker. I think this is the road. I think I'm losing the road. I just got to be careful. I didn't realize, because on here, it's like, hey, look, there's a road. It goes, oh, I just need to follow the road. But th I'm going straight east. All right, oh, we'll see what happens. So, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I have a, I have sort of a mixed bag feeling about intellectual property owners enforcing their intellectual property rights. That I am more actually surprised how many IP owners are generous with like letting people use their content and a lot of reasons like generosity might not be the right term because a lot of them make it a calculation they think oh they're they're buying goodwill by letting people use their id they're, they're promoting their product by letting people share their ip through streaming and that sort of thing uh but they are under no obligation to do that to allow that all right nope i'm definitely lost Ooh, what's this? So, yeah. I don't know that I would ever... If, if, if anyone ever really was for their own reasons, like, no, we don't want people to be showing this stuff. They try to enforce it. I'm not going to go so far as to boycott. I would say, yeah, I'd like it if they were like a lot of the other developers and let us do it. But I know... I in no way feel legally or morally entitled uh, to be able to stream their stuff. It's just when they do enforce it like that, this is so not used to it, it's a kind of a real shock to us. Well, yeah, exactly, Nick. But it, for various reasons, certain IP owners might feel differently. All right, let's see if we can... Just get around these guys without getting killed. This is obviously like a this is a an adventure hot spot. The game is a release, should be fair game, it's free real estate. Mm. That's been that's been the um That's been how most game developer or, or uh, intellectual property owners have been treating it. But that is yeah, that's their decision. No, that's I mean, that's how I feel about it. But that's their that's their decision. And there are arguments to be made, which seem to be prevalent among IP owners, that it's a good thing. Oh, you out here? All right, Ava. Oh, it sounds like fun. Have fun with that, Ava. Just the ad revenue. You're not going to sweat it. Like virtually nothing on I read the striking. Even even ad revenue, I consider a generous solution. <laughs> uh, to be honest, but yeah, I mean, because it, it's it's it's. I understand why you're upset. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying. I'm not saying like, come on, Dark Jake, what's up, buddy? Don't be unreasonable. Like, I understand where you're coming from. I just know when I look at it, I look at, I'm, I probably look at it from a slightly different lens. And I'm more honestly, like when I started streaming and making content, it was, I had all sorts of asterisks in my mind that anything that I do could come crumbling down if the wrong IP owner decided to take exception. Like, if I did a Let's Play with 50 episodes, 
And one of them was like, hey, we're, I'm just going to strike this person 50 times. Uh, then I'd be gone. And that could happen at any time. And it just doesn't because that's not how most IP owners operate. But... Oh, hey, Mike. No, I didn't. I actually looked at it today. There's a DLC just came out for this game today. I took a look at it. It looks good. Uh, the issue for me is that it looks like it's something better for someone that's progressed further in the game, or at least is better and more experienced at the game. Whereas I've experienced so little of the content already, and it looks more like it's a it's a more advanced area. Uh, it's got more advanced like classes and mechanics can introduce and they seem cool but like i'm just i just realized i haven't been to most places i haven't progressed a character very far at all in any profession ever so and given the fact that it's not on sale it's a decent price 19.99 i considered pulling the trigger on it but i was just like you know what i i just it's content that i don't think i'll be able to to really appreciate yet uh and but if I get to the point where I'm like, oh, man, like now I see why because I looked at the features and I'm like, oh, man, yeah. And now I see why I want, you know, why why I'd want that. Then I, I probably will immediately the first time I feel that way at all, I'll be like, all right, it's time to buy it. <laughs> well, for you, I would almost consider it like a do it automatically type of thing. And they describe it as something they they kind of wanted in the base game originally. Oh, what's that piece of shit? Oh, no. Why did I make a campfire next to a wandering monster? Please don't see me. We're trying to be sneaky now. I'm going to have to double back and get my pot, my cooking pot. As turns out, I picked a poor location to set up camp. Or maybe not. I was going to see about that water. That rancid water. Here it is. Let's boil this. See what it does. Oh, it just got clean water. Okay, I thought maybe it'll give me, like, poison on the side, too. All right. Going to set up. My tent. And how's my, do I need to do any repairs? Oh yeah, I was going to take care of some of this stuff too. I forgot. I was going to disassemble this stuff for scrap. Some of these weapons, if they're, they're not worth hauling around till you sell sometimes, but it never hurts to get a little extra scrap for crafting. So much more content to do without the DLC. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So you've only done two builds. Okay. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot to, it. but I mean, honestly, I think if I had played through the game all the way once, I would probably get the DLC when I went on the next go because it does just sort of, it does unlock the world to some extent and a new faction and stuff. And it would be, it would be worth it for me, even if, even if there was still like builds I hadn't explored yet. It might be for 20 bucks, it'd probably be worth it for me at that point. But since I've explored so little, like I literally, this is the first time I've ever been on this map ever. Hallowed Marsh. Never been here before. The desert one, never been there. I've only, on the forest one, I've only explored the direct route between the newbie zone, the road from the newbie zone, straight to the town. And that's it. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to beeline it for the, uh, for the main town here. I came in down here. I'm just trying to beeline it across the zone to get to the, to Monsoon. Because I want to see what, like, what the trainers have and that sort of thing.
Mm-hmm. Going to MMO and survival games. Oh yeah, I, Seven Days to Die I'm a fan of. I think I did a couple private streams a couple years ago on that. When I was, the last time I really played it a lot was in 2018. I got to do a little kick with it. I get into it every year or two. And I always enjoy it. Uh, although I did hear they ner they they nerfed underground bases. I think that was the last time I thought about playing it. My strategy is always to dig down and make an underground base, like a hobbit hole, and then the, the zombies never knew how to find me. And from what I understand, they coded zombies now so that it, they not- OH SHIT! FUCK! Scared the shit out of me! See, this is a- that- this could be a live example of- I was mentioning before I started playing this game that you can't pause it, and you gotta just pay attention to what's happening around you. You know what? Screw this guy. Yeah? I can't... I can't decide if this thing... Did I just happen to get right in its way, or did it stalk me? I just know I don't want to be sitting around a campfire at night, and then this piece of shit comes lumbering out of the shadows, tries to kick my ass. Shoot! Shoot! Seems it seems timid. Oh, come on out of your little stink cloud and come get me. Oh no! Tough guy, huh? Oh, he's fast. Ah! All right, a phytosaur, huh? I don't know what any of this shit is, but I'll grab it. Oh, hey, Alley. <laughs> Let me see, let me put this away. That'll teach him to interrupt my... My ma my merry camping experience. He wasn't actually that bad, it was just more scary. Yeah, let me, uh... Move this stuff. Down to my backpack. All right. See, it's it's half the night's gone. Hmm. Yeah. I was gonna check my. All right. I could maybe do one hour of. One hour of uh. Repair. That should work. You set certain amount of hours to guard and it'll keep you from getting ambushed. I'm not sure how that works in practice if you're like... Because the rest of the time if you're sleeping... You know... Theoretically, you could still, in real life, be attacked. But if you spend enough hours watching... Then apparently if you, you can sleep, no one will attack you. You're like, oh, that guy's vigilant! We were watching him. He's, he's vigilant. Better leave him alone. All right, time to pack up. Have a little, uh... Where's my water? Have a little water. 
You know what? I could use a little more of this rancid water. This is good. Well, I still got the, the campfire set up. All right, grab my pot back. And let us continue on our way. I think I'm I'm going north. Yes. <laughs> with a bottle of Chianti. What did I get with... Did I pick up some special meat? I wasn't even really paying close attention to what he dropped. I know we got like, like a mushroom bar and that. Oh, my alpha sandwich is going bad. That goes bad quick. I better. Here, I'm going to have some of that. I think alpha sandwiches give you buffs and stuff. I think I got rage. It's like Red Bull gives you wings. Alpha sandwiches give you rage. What's that? Uh, hey. The, this map, I'm really not sure where anything is. Okay, I must be. I don't know where I am. Am I here? Here? This is kind of cool. I have some of those natural tents. They're like one use where you plant them and like a tent grows. I have one back. I put it in my I put it in my storage chest at home. I haven't used it. Yeah, okay, they can't be they restore food and drink when you sleep, but they can't be picked back up. Yeah, no, I haven't used one yet, but I did have one. See, this is like, right now, I don't want to be distracted, but this area is very, very intriguing. Oh, is this like, like this area's version of a spot where I can camp? In the main, in my home zone, if you find butterflies fly, floating around like this and you drop your tent down, you have a zero ambush chance. And this looks... Strongly suggestive. Oh no, this is something else. Uh, I think this is bad. All right, so yeah, I think I'm here. I feel like these things make me super conspicuous. That, that's my fear now. I'm enjoying the, the mystical like, oh, but I also feel like uh, every hostile thing within a, a thousand yards of me is going to be like, oh, who's that noob with the shiny shit all over him? Didn't he know to avoid those things? Okay, so you take them to a certain plant. It's like pollen or something. North, Monsoon City. Yes, that's where I'm going. I should pick up more wood for a campfire kit, too. I like having a campfire kit on me. All right, there's some unsavory looking fellows up ahead. I don't have a, I don't feel a strong incentive to engage in combat right now. Because I don't want to accumulate a bunch of I'm not looking to accumulate a bunch of loot. Unless that for some reason I thought it was going to be high value loot, which usually random bandits don't have. Whatever suffered by following glowing orbs in the swamp? Wait a minute. I remember something like that. That's like the sailor's tales, where it's like if you're ever hearing like beautiful songs coming off the islands as you pass them by, the rocks. Steer towards it, because 
Something awesome is it. Something awesome is waiting for you. You get an ingredient. Huh. Well, maybe I'll have to run by certain of those mushrooms are looking like the sort of thing that weird glow bugs would go after. Hey, more marshmallows. I think I'll leave that alone for now. I don't know what to do with marshmallows. Hey, look, guys. Mushrooms. What do you think? Hey, no? <gasps> Blood mushrooms. Oh, these are... These are rare in my home... In my home zone. You need them to make uh, healing potions. But apparently they grow here like wild mushroom. <laughs> Glowing penis gnats. I mean, maybe you're right, Maxie, but where'd the penis come from? I don't... I got a pretty good view of these guys. They just look round. They're like orbs. That's a very oddly shaped penis. Unless I'm the penis, in which case that would make sense. Uh, I don't mind them. They're kind of cool, but they also make me a little nervous. Hey, go hang out with this. No? Okay. They're just going to be with me for the rest of the game now. Oh, what's that big artichoke looking thing? You think because I killed that big, scary, lumbering dinosaur that it, that thing started it? All I wanted to do was uh, boil water and go to sleep. Ooh. So yeah, different wildlife and and things they'll fight each other. So it looks like one of those things I fought last night is fighting with a bandit. Looks like it might already killed one. Is that the same kind of thing? Has some of the same moves. I'm gonna sneak in with this thing's not gonna be like a great idea. An ice witch! Oh yeah, those things. That I, that's what I ran into last stream that nearly ended me. Steel shield. All right, I am super weighted down right now. You could, you'd kite uh, bandits into those like dinosaur guys, you mean? Or dinosaurs into dinosaurs. Let's move all this stuff. That shield has got to be weighing me down. Move some of these back up in here. If they're natural enemies, okay. So they'll dis if they're chasing you, and you lead them through so like something else, they'll fight each other instead. This thing glows. I want to see. Hey guys, look. Look, it's your, it's your friend, this plant that also glows. You should go pump it. Doesn't, they don't, they're, they're not falling for it. 
I can l gather some though. Yeah, I think these things turned out they're not so uh they're not so hostile. Uh oh. Are they gonna go after the I'll stick around if they're gonna fight that mon monster guy. But if they're investigating because they saw a glimmer of me and my big glowing balls, I don't want to fight them. Taking naps of boiling water are great offenses. <laughs> Say, like, making eye contact with, like, wild animals. They don't like it. Can add boiling water and taking naps to the list. I just want to see if there's... Okay. I want to see if they're going to meet up with uh, with that monster over there. Because uh, I don't mind if... Uh... Hey! Yeah! Gosh, where's... I need some pop... I, I am thirsty, actually. I was going to say I need popcorn. Uh, I think they're going to kill it this time. It was pretty beat up. Ooh, clean water. I've, you know, I just had a sip of water. Where do they go? Am I going crazy, or do they just vanish? Or was that them? Out in the water? I'm... I don't know what's happening. I'm not curious enough to stick around. I spent a long time here already. Yeah, I figure the orbs make me stick out like a sore thumb. I feel very conspicuous. So it is a sort of thing like if I was going to a party or something or back in my clubbing days when I used to go to clubs if I could walk in and be like I have arrived and have like lights just spinning mysteriously around me all cool like I'd go for that shit be great part of like a like a wizard costume get the wizard robes be like ooh Don't question my power. What is that place? That might be where I'm going. It just seems so far away. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Uh, am I working myself into a little corner here? I am. Yeah, I'll just hide. I'm just gonna- Oh! I'm just gonna hide on this mountain. That guy looks like more than I want to chew right now. I'm on a mission of peace! I'm on a diplomatic mission to Alderaan. Don't ask me where the ambassador is, though. I can't answer that question. Hey, gun kid. That makes sense. I'm glad you made it. Though you missed all my fantastic stories that I told at the beginning of the stream. 
You have to go back and visit later. Yeah, that's all right, man. Sometimes it's th it's almost time for me to go live. Like when I don't stream, it's like, oh man, I'm sleepy. Sometimes I don't even make my own stream, guy kid. So you know. Take her away. Tell the tear this ship apart until the plans are found. Nick knew exactly where I was going. I was one, I was assuming somebody would get the reference because it wasn't exactly obscure for a Star Wars fan. <laughs> hey, what do you think, guys? What do you like this plant? That plant's really neat, huh? No, couldn't give a one shit. Hey, this thing looks like the kind of plant that a glowy thing would like to hang out with. It also looks like the kind of plant that would actually eat me if I... It hurt me? <gasps> Look at that! Gather flyer firefly powder. Yay, the circle of life. I got an achievement called the circle of life. Well, it turns out that Mike Ladd knew what he was talking about. No, I didn't doubt him. Oh, I guess I did. I did say Alderaan. I forgot that I actually flat out just mentioned Alderaan. That's a pretty dead giveaway. I just realized I got completely turned around, too. Didn't I come from this direction? Oh shit, it's that guy. Wait, yeah, I did come from this direction. What's happening to me? That's completely the wrong way. You just stay away, mister. Okay, somehow I veered, I veered way off course. Or I've been completely turned around. One of these two things have happened, but I think veered off course. When I ran away earlier from that guy. Ooh. Here, let's move a couple of these into the old bag. My bag's starting to get filled up, though. <laughs> Nor is it around anymore. I missed the last half of your sentence. For some reason... I should be climbing? Okay. Maybe I'm going west? None of this seems like the right direction. Let me go up this hill. See if I get a vantage point. I want to go to that laser artichoke off in the distance. I believe that is conspicuously my destination. I just don't know how to get there. This map... Made it seem like it would be so simple. All right. Hey, greasy ferns. That sounds delicious. You give me some of that. Uh. Now, hold on a sec. I'm starting to see something. Oh, here we go. 
Okay. There, maybe I take one of those boats. Seems like the like I can't actually walk there. I've got to. Go west until I can go north. Well, if the boats don't work out, that'll be my next stop. Just according to the map. Oh, maybe this is exactly where I am. It's just. This is the entrance to the city is the boat. That's my guess. In here. I do know where the boat is, but now I'm just this whole th place here. Wanted to give it a quick looky loo. All right. So there's so much stuff I wandered past on my way here. You sort of, it, my experience so far in this game is when you make a decision to do a certain thing, you sort of got to stick to the plan. Like it's not like Skyrim, you can kind of be like, oh, I need to go to this place, but I'm going to hit every dungeon and kill everything and loot everything on the way. Hey, free boat ride. Sweet. Boats. All right. This is kind of a cool looking town. Hi. Good to see you. Wait, is this someone from my hometown? Oh, is this the dot? The, this is like our mayor's daughter. Let's see, how am I holding up? She left. That's why the mayor of my old town has asked me to be her heir, because her actual heir was like, dude, this the politics here are too effed up. I'm out. I'm joining like the Holy Order in the Swamp City. And she's like, y you can join me if you want. You come find me later. But I want to be careful not to progress any faction quests. You know what? I don't want to give spoilers in case anyone else wants to play this game, but you progress the actual main storyline a couple steps, you get at a point where it it triggers a quest that requires you to like you have to do something really hard within a certain time limit or something very bad will happen. That's all I'm going to say. And when I played it before, I didn't realize that was going to happen. And the very bad thing happened. And I was very, I was very unhappy about that. And I don't want that to happen again. What I prefer is to make sure that I've, I've pumped up my bad attitude enough so that when I trigger that scenario, I'd be able to, uh, I maybe be able to stop the bad thing from happening, but I don't want to wander blindly into it, but just having some casual conversation with the main NPC quest. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, by the way, you better do this thing right now or else there'll be hell to pay. And it's like, you have 30 days. It's like, what? Oh, all right, gun kid. Ready? Oh, The Last of Us 2. All right, hey, fair enough, buddy. Fair enough, ha have fun with that. I know you're not the only one looking forward to that. So I, I don't have a PlayStation. So, yeah, like, whatever. Be, uh, I'll be over here a little jealous, but I got plenty of games that I enjoy, so, you know. So, yeah, this is kind of a cool town, though. I like that it's, uh, it's either glitched or it has neon lights, or, like, fluorescent light features. I think it's actually how it's... Who's this guy? The bad thing happened to you also, Mike? 
Yeah. I mean, for me, it was... It was enough of a traumatic, like, what the F type of thing that it's one of the reasons I stopped playing. Like, I was like, that's bullshit. I don't want that to happen. Like, it's not just some obscure storyline thing. Like, oh, I'm not going to get the best ending. It's like something literally world-alteringly catastrophic could occur that will change the way you play the game. And I was trying to stop it. And I realized at a certain point, like, no, I'm just not going to... I'm not going to be able to stop this thing. Did you... Did you start over, Mike, when that happened? I mean, I think some people just play through it. Right? You just play through it, but... It just seems like it would make the game so much harder... If the bad thing happens. Like the whole rest of the game. Hey, junk pile. Oh shit, another cooking pot? Let me see, I'm gonna I'm gonna shred up those boots though. Oh, you go back to the other once in a while to see where things go. All right. Well, I know the philosophy of this game is supposed to be like, hey, part of the fun is you just got to roll. You just got to roll with it. And if you're, you know, if you don't take care of it or you don't, you know, you make, you have to make decisions in the game. And if you come up on something and you're not ready for it, you might, you know. Like, it's almost like, in some sense, I feel like the bad thing they expect that maybe more players than not, their world is just going to, that's going to be a thing that's happened in their world. But I knew for me it was enough of a bad, it was bad enough that I'm like, bullshit. Yeah, I mean, even before when I was thinking about playing this game again, I was like, I kind of want to play it, but I don't want to deal with the bad thing. I don't want the. It, it was like literally it, it, over the past year, the few times I wanted to pick it up. One, if I start getting itched for it, I would think about I'm going to have to deal with the bad thing. And like, uh, the merchant's promenade. Oh, this is just like another... What? What can I do for you? Let's see. Do I have just random crap that I want to sell? Here, I don't need... You take these berries? Uh... My alpha sandwich is going to go... Probably going to be bad by the morning. So here, buy... Take my alpha sandwiches. What else? Oh. Anti-poison properties when boiled. I don't have to boil those then. And with these, I can make mana potions. I don't think I need another cooking pot right now. You know? I don't. I brought an extra one. I brought my extra cooking pot and an extra alchemy kit so that I could set up a little spot somewhere in town to be like my local HQ. I think you could eventually buy homes in each town. But in the interim, there doesn't appear to be any any kind of law implemented to keep you from like finding a spot in each town and just pitching a tent, setting up a camp. So I was like, yeah, I, I, I'll just I'm going to come to the new town. I'll bring an extra pot and an extra alchemy kit and I'll, I'll set up camp. The only thing you don't have is storage. So which is, a you know, kind of a problem if you want to really make some place like your base of operations. You can get the hint, but most people... Well, that was the impression I... That was... And I actually looked it, looked it up later, and I realized, like, there are ways around it. And I was picking up on that, and I was trying... 
when I was, and I didn't look up any spoilers when I was playing it before, but I was trying to find the workarounds. And either I wasn't understanding it right, or I just wasn't able to meet the those the conditions, the, the alternatives. Because one of these situations where it's like, either you, yeah, it'd be the equivalent of saying, either you can fight your way into Mordor and kill Sauron, or you can do these more subtle things and achieve the same ultimate effect to prevent the bad things from happening. You put a, oh, you put a leaf tent in towns you don't own a house and so that way you don't you keep it there you don't you end up have, keeping the benefit of it because it becomes sort of permanent okay that's a good idea mike i like that uh 68 pounds that's a lot okay i'm gonna shed a lot of weight though when i um when i drop off the pot and the other thing. Oh, this is a cool looking town, though. I'm kind of into this. Okay, that's back. You take a trap door. Are the streets down below? Is that. No? What's up? Oh, that also goes back to the streets. Okay. Okay, yeah, so the streets are, are down below. I was like, why is there a trap door? Monsoon streets. The melon farmer. Any other distant, different recipe? Bread of the wild. All right. I don't think I'm going to blow money on recipes yet. If I'm going to blow money, I don't have a lot of money. So if I do blow money, I think I'm going to buy, uh, find the skill trainers and blow the money on skill trainers. Time limit, and if you leave the zone before completing and come back, the bad... Oh, really? So you have 30 days to do a thing, and you can't be like, oh, let me run back to this other town and do this thing in the other zone. Because it's like, oh, now you, you just... You just gave it up. Good job, buddy. Can I fall off this thing? Oh, yeah, I can. Oh, but it doesn't seem to hurt. Okay. All right, you know, I like all the neon and stuff in here, but it is dark enough. I think I might just like to find a, a nice little spot to set up camp soon. Who's this guy? Oh, the cow, the caravaneer, Serobian caravaneer. So, uh, the Serobian is the DLC, is the other faction in the new DLC. So apparently, if you buy the DLC. When you find these caravaneers, you can pay them like 200 gold to transport you to their capital city. And that's how you get to the expansion area. Greetings, friend. Farewell, uh, my friend. So he doesn't have much to say. He probably has a little more to say if Greetings, I... Greetings, friend. If I buy the expansion. <laughs> I'm just curious if he's got any weird stuff. Adventurer's boots, huh? Let me see, how does that compare? Well, that's way better than the boots I have on now. I'm not gonna buy it, that's almost all my money. All right, well, I think I wanna stay near where all the vendors are. I'm tempted to see if I can find a spot on the right on the merchant's promenade But I'm, I'm not feeling it up here. It feels like a little too cramped like I like the feeling that I've found my own little spot Yeah, I got that download I I made sure to uh, I made sure to do that update just in case sometimes when a uh, you know when an expansion drops they do integrate some of the features into the base game as well so i wanted to make sure 
Well, you don't have a choice. You have to do the downloads anyways on Steam before they'll let you play it. They, you don't, they don't force you to download it right away, but they'll, they'll force you to download it before you can actually play the game again. Unless you're, if you're playing Skyrim, you can work around that by using like SKSE and launching it through SKSE instead, but that's the only real exception I've found on Steam. All right, so now the uh, now the fun part is trying to find what I perceive to be a cool little spot in town to sort of set up my little my little corner. I want it to be around here somewhere. This is kind of idyllic. But is it too? Is no, I can't get to the water. Is there, is there a way to access water here? Well, I guess in town, I probably shouldn't expect to be able to get to to, uh, to a water source. Well, in the, but in my hometown, I can. I was like, maybe I can only get the water source in the overworld, but... A deep sea angler, uh, a deep sea angler fish with that lantern in my face. Yeah, I, this would be like a whoa! Look at that guy's. He's got those glowing stripes. That's pretty badass looking. I think this is a faction that they're, they're like holy. They're like the holy paladin type. I think. All right, so this is where I came in. I think that's what I'm going to try and find, though, is if there's any if there's any place where I can access water. Because it's nice when you have a little camp area to be able to boil water. Oh, it's a mage faction zone. Okay. Because I thought the theme of it is like they're the holy... Isn't it like the purity faction or something like that? And so that made me think... Oh, about paladins or whatever. <laughs> Matus? That's awfully sinister. Why does it go straight to me having to eat somebody? Hey, I'm thirsty and there's... Uh, Here's clean water in the well. Well, that's there's water. Maybe that's my solution. Okay, I was gonna set up here, but then I realized this is actually like a road. This is actual pathway. It's like, oh, I think I found my little nook. I don't know why it, I mean, it doesn't make a difference. I don't know why I'm making it such a big deal, but it's like, I really want to find a nice little pleasant plot of land, the kind of place that I would feel proud to like sit and have, have like a cup of tea and just sit and watch, watch city life stroll by, you know, like that. All right, well, maybe we are back to this place. But I think I need a little more. Hmm. No. Nope. This really should not be such a difficult decision, but I'm being very persnickety. All right, let's get two campfires. Hope there's no ordinance against me gathering lumber for, from their, their trees. We'll put one up on the, you know, up here on the stone where it won't.
And where's the other one? It's not letting me place it. I want to place it right here so it looks all like symmetrical and nice. I guess that's his it's a little screwball. This is not looking at all as nice as I was hoping it would. Yeah, the sideways soup pot is looking a little bit ramshackle. Truth be told. So, but uh, this'll this'll do for now. Maybe I should mm, if I put the my tent too close to the fires too, I'll end up overheating while I'm trying to sleep. That's another negative. I'm hungry. Do I have any more of that? Oh I sold the alpha meat. Oh, I really don't have any kind of food, do I? Let's see. I have alpha... Oh, I, I have alpha jerky, don't I? Here. Even the jerky's going bad quickly. There. Hopefully I'm far enough from my fires that I won't have a heat stroke in the middle of the night. In fact, you know what? Let's just turn this off. I can't. Okay, screw it. I don't I can't turn it off without disassembling it. Let's see, do I need any repairs? Yeah. Do one hour repairs. And yeah, we'll do like this. Yeah, I'm gonna be warm, I know. What a jerk E. Yeah, is it well that it's made from alpha meat, which is supposed to be like potent meat that spoils quickly. And it turns out anything you make with it spoils more quickly. Because I have got jerky from regular meat that I made back in my home area that lasted a long time. I'm hot and hungry. I really didn't plan for a lot of eating. Will this keep me from being hungry, eating this tartarine? Okay, that's good. And now I'm protected from the cold. Not really a problem, but, you know. It looks organic. I just noticed that. <laughs> Oh, what a glorious morning in this weird, weird, beautiful town. All right, let's continue our little, uh... Let's see, did it? I wanted to check all the merchants. I think there was a, still, like, a general merchant that I didn't... I didn't check out. This guy... How can I help you? Gal, sorry. Hmm. Ooh, what's this? An explorer lantern? That shines brightly for 20? Yeah. That's... I, I like the idea of that. How can I help you? Oop, hold on. Put that put that out. How can I help nope. you? Nope. There you go.
But how do I refill it? I guess I could just do this and oil. Hopefully that will cause it to refill. I'm not going to do it right now, but I think I am going to actually get you? rid of my old lantern. Hey, Noxire, how you doing, man? What's up? How you holding up in these trying times? We miss you too, man. I hope everything's all right with you. Um. Oh, that's what I forgot. I was going to make use that to make potions before it's spoiled. All right, where's the old here? Take this. I don't need this old lantern now that I have the new awesome lantern. Been hella busy, but finally not busy. All right. Yeah, I've been I've been steady. My work has been stressful, but it hasn't been because of everything that's going on, they've actually stopped. We have to ask special permission to work any overtime. And I'm like, all right, I'll just work my, I'll work my 40 hours. You don't, I'm not going to beg to work extra because I don't, I don't, uh, if they, usually they, they would allow us to work five. And that's the thing is you have to ask permission to work more than five extra hours. So this office, obviously even that's pretty reasonable compared to like if you consider a job with a lot of hours you're not usually thinking 45 hours a week but yeah i've been working pretty much just a straight 40 and no commute because i'm working remotely so not mad the only problem is i don't now i've got to get a stuff like a stationary bike that makes my balls get violently squished makes it hard to pee uh, but that's that's another burden that I have to deal with. You know, got to stay active. Hey, what's up? Alone Park? Or is it Alone Park? It looks like Alone Park. But then I want to turn Alone into like a name. Like, hey, Alone, how you doing? You pulled 50 a week for the past couple of months? I, I've had jobs where 50 was my regular hours. It was like my regular negotiated schedule was 50 hours a week. I did that for a couple years. And I was in my 20s. It didn't bother me that much. It didn't tire me out that much. Well, considering that was a more, a more physical job. But like the job I do now, when I've pushed that many hours, like had longer days like that, because it's a very mentally straining like challenging and emotionally straining job a lot of the time like it can really it really starts to <laughs> it can really start to uh to add up but yeah you got resistance bands because the gyms are closed i don't think you were here mike but i told the big story about how like i really actually think i injured my something in my groinal region from just I kept going back to the bike every day and I think there was a certain point, point where my body was like dude your balls need a your balls need a few days off from the bike my friend <laughs> and I didn't listen I was like fuck it I'm gonna power through it and uh that was Sunday I haven't been on it since I'm like hmm Sunday was a bad day I had I had some some complications that I'm still somewhat recovering from four days later you say i wake up i go i'll give myself a little cough and i'll be like nope still something doesn't feel right down there i'm not getting back on the bike yet <laughs> things something still feels a little bit like it's recovering so i don't know what the hell i did but um that, that it was it was nuts for nick and therein lies the problem. All right. Oh yeah, but I was gonna look at the, I sold her some stuff, but I, I, I don't think I followed through with looking at everything she had. A trader backpack, huh? Okay, so a trader backpack has a hundred capacity. I, my backpack now is 75 and it slows you down if you get in combat. 
This one will do the same, but it'll actually slow your overall movement speed down by 10%. Huh, I can't afford it right now, but that's... That's worth at least having. Okay. Let's see what else they're selling here. Just so I can put it on, on, on like my mental radar. There's one of those plant tents. And yeah, they're not that pricey. Maybe if I find what I consider to be the perfect spot... But it doesn't give you that bonus of stamina, does it? I don't know. Well, like right now, I had a very small one to begin with that gave me 25, but didn't encumber me at all. 25 pounds of, of stuff. And then there's the next step up was the Nomad backpack, which is 50, but it slows your dodge down. 50 is a lot more. And then what's considered like kind of a step up, but it's situational, is the Adventurer's backpack. It's 35, uh, but it doesn't encumber you during combat. So this is a game where when you're fighting and you try to fight with your backpack on, it's like, oh, I'm just going to do a little roll. And you just it's like you're going through molasses. So you've got to this is your travel gear. It's your survival gear. So when you're going to get into a fight, it's like, OK, well, I'm not I'm not going to wear all this shit while I'm fighting. So there's a, a mechanic to very quickly to very quickly drop it. And then when you're done, you go back and you can pick it back up. Uh, but some of these backpacks, like the Avengers backpack, you don't have to ever drop it. You're just going. And then the first backpack that you bought, you had to carry your lantern in one of your hands. So as you progress now, obviously here you can see it's got a whole special apparatus just to carry the, like a stick, just to carry the lantern on. And you need that when you're going in caves and stuff. They're, okay, so I'm just talking about, I guess, backpacks that I've seen in Shopkeepers. So I wasn't even aware that there were additional quest backpacks. Yes, Noxire. Uh, there is local split-screen co-op and online co-op. And I, the way that it works is you, if you do the online co-op, everyone has their own game. Like, you play in your own game, but you can visit someone else's game. And while you're there... You get whatever you get, whatever loot you get or whatever you get, um, you get to take back. And the game doesn't have experience and stuff. Uh, it's more like equipment and buying skills to progress your character. So while you're in someone else's game, obviously, if there's any kind of story progression, you don't get. You won't get credit for that in your world, but. The game is very much the type where you do spend a good deal of time just wandering around just trying to like gather resources and gather you know make earn money that sort of thing i hey, hate keith what's up man how you doing animal lawyer i always want to say animal layer still my mouth is trained you want to take an aptitude test or consider job counselor alone park about to finish high school and you don't know what to do after high school got any ideas because I know for sure you finished high school and did things after. Well, this is true, Lone Park. Uh, although, here's the funny thing is, is I don't know that I can give good advice. <laughs> because my own path has been a really windy and screwball path uh, the, and many people would not consider ideal. And many people would still not consider ideal. Um, in the sense that I'm a lawyer, but, like, I live in an apartment, for example. I don't have, like, a big house or a boat. Which, that's not really ever been a priority for me, but, yeah, I wouldn't mind having that stuff. But, yeah. But, you know, so I'm, do I'm doing okay. I'm doing good. I'm doing a lot better. I'm doing the best that I've ever done in my life right now. But, if I were to, like, I wouldn't be like, hey, you should do what I did. Um, yeah, so like my, like I, I'm a big fan of college because I think the way you can learn to think in college is helpful in life and everyone should, ben could benefit from it. Not necessarily everyone, but it, because some people that's just like not their thing. 
but I feel like if you see if it feels like it's your thing I when I came out of high school I was thirsty for the kind of knowledge I couldn't learn in high school uh, there's all these topics that I want to learn about like archaeology and, and philosophy and and uh, psychology and sociology all these they're all these like topics that they didn't really teach in high school that I wanted to learn and I was super jazzed to get into college just to be able to take courses and all these there were so many subjects and I was the type of person that was like oh my god I want to learn everything I want to major in everything and that was sort of my approach was like you can wait a couple years to declare a major and it was sort of just try different things go to college try different things and see what you like um but you know then it's hard because then sometimes it's like the people that did the best are the people that had the plan going in what they wanted to do and they spent all those years cultivating like oh i want to be this certain thing for a living and i'm gonna in my spare time volunteer at these places that do that thing uh all four years and i'm gonna you know all this stuff and by the time they get out they're well situated to do that thing whereas like i got in i was like yeah i think i like english or philosophy and maybe I'll be a professor, an English professor or something. But it was sort of like I really didn't have a plan. And when I got out, it was like I was working at a grocery store where it, to like give me extra spending money. I worked at a grocery store while I was in college. I worked at a video store when I was in high school. And it just seemed like what I did with my life was an extension of the jobs that I'd had. So it's like, hey, yeah, you have a college degree from UCLA. We see you worked at a video store and you were a shift supervisor at a, at a grocery store and it's like oh like those are the employers that seemed interested in me were ones that valued that instead of hey look you've got a college degree so that's where i'm like yeah because i also know people that have been like i went into college i was going to go into i want to be a businessman so i started my business major right away and I did an internship and then by the time they get through college they're like I don't want to do that shit like they get they finish so it's it, it can be really hard I mean the only thing I can really say is in the end everyone's sort of got to find their own path and there's it can be really hard to give advice on the best way to go about doing that you did trade school and you ended up in aerospace yeah Mike from what all the counts what you told me things ended up working working out for you that it did trade school was that in any way set you up for aerospace i mean the reason i ended up going to law school wasn't really because i always dreamed of being a lawyer it's because i got out i got out of uh, undergrad with an english degree and i looked into being a professor and i was like oh those guys struggle just to get full-time work like it takes them years and years and if they're lucky, then they get a full-time job as a, like an English professor. And I was like, no, I want something a little more steady. But the jobs I was getting were like, oh, now you're the ship supervisor of this, you know, shipping and receiving department at this business. And it was all just building on what I'd done already. So I was like, I got it. I got to figure out how to leverage my education into something a little like so to get me out of this you worked at a grocery store now what's the next step and oh that's cute you got a college degree let's talk about your grocery store experience uh so eventually yeah i i it did i got into like career counseling and and they brought up law school as something that is a an english undergrad based on the stuff that you learn as an English major, major, that translates well, and the skills you learn as an English major translate well into the legal field. So I was like, oh, I didn't even thought of that. But I do like research and I, I like analyzing things, analyzing language and words and deductive reasoning and all this other stuff. And, and so I kind of, as I looked into it, I got sold on the idea, but I, I never, I still am like, I wouldn't want to be like, what you when you think about a lawyer like that's not what i've ever wanted to do like ah i'm gonna go to court and kick ass you know so i could have been the gaming yeah the gaming professor i'm sure there's already plenty of those 
but yeah, who knows? I knew pretty much I didn't want to be a doctor, but being a lawyer was something I never... My impression of lawyers up until I basically was considering law school was like, oh, lawyers are kind of slimy. Like arrogant, slimy people that are... They'll get you if you don't... You know, it's like they'll, they'll, they'll get you. You have to watch out. You can't trust them. And, and that... For the most part, I mean, they, yeah, I think there are people that like that. For the most part, that, that idea of what lawyers are has been greatly dispelled. <laughs> but certainly people who are, who are litigators can end up having quite a bit more of a vicious streak. Because it's part of their job to have that. But some of them are still like good ethical people and some of them end up becoming kind of nasty. Nasty, aggressive people, because that can end up working, you know? Non-gaming lawyers are slimy, unlike gaming lawyers. Thank you, Maxie. You wish you'd just gone to school for art. Maybe you'd actually be doing something art-related rather than being unmotivated to learn art techniques now. Yeah, it's hard. I knew people that got art degrees, and it's one of those majors that it's like it's self-fulfilling, but it those are the kinds of careers that are hard to break into. Like originally why I wanted to be an English major is I want to be a novelist. I want to be a fiction novelist. That was my dream when ever since I was like a kid and in high school, that was what I thought that somehow I was going to be like the next. Like uh, I want to write fantasy novels. So I was like, I wanted to be like the next. Uh, Weiss and Hickman. I love Dragonlance. Like, I uh, I would say Tolkien, but Tolkien was a little too dry for me. But I loved Tolkien. Like, if I could have been a, my own version of Tolkien. And I and I got even, like, an emphasis. It was very competitive at UCLA to get into this creative writing program. Like, it wasn't just like, oh, it's this is a rink-a-dink thing you can do. You had to uh, compete with other people to be accepted. Like, you could compete with, like, 150 other people to be accepted into a workshop of 15 in order to be part of their little writing, their creative writing subspecialty, which was basically a regular English major, but you you took a, a, a sequence of these workshops and you had to be accepted into each workshop, compete and be accepted independently into each workshop. And I got, it had to be accepted into three in order to qualify for the specialty. And I did. And it was like this great achievement, but, but it, it for people that knew the, the department understood that was a big achievement, but nobody out in the outside world, they're like, oh, you got a creative writing specialty. Wow, that's impressive. Um, so I had talent, but I, I, I reached a point and at a certain point I realized that I feel like I, I either didn't have enough of the passion for it or cause it didn't, it doesn't come easy. It didn't come easy for me. Like it didn't, I didn't feel like a natural in writing at the level of people who are can make a living at it, I guess is the thing. So, yeah, I'm doing. This is one of my specialties, and my guy is slowly starving to death. That's the difference in this game. Let me see. Do I have any more alpha jerky? Oh, this stuff's going. Some of that stuff still. I'm probably just gonna have to go back to a vendor and buy some bread. That's funny. It is alone walks in and asks this one question, and that that could get me going for like an entire half hour. Like no more gameplay. Not that I was I was sort of derailed a little bit already, but school talk has you running loops. Let's see, trade school taught you how to set up machines that made jet engine fasteners. Okay, so it was a natural, it was the path that led, uh, like, created a, the, your career path. So, sculpted animated cartoonist, aerospace boss. Yeah, no, I, you, that you, I've heard, I've caught glimpses of you talking about things that you've done and things you're doing now, and it sounds really interesting, Mike. And I know I look at a lot of the things that I've done because, you know, I've spent a lot of years in my life 
doing kind of off the wall. Even with what I'm doing now, it's, you know, it's a, it's a reasonably, like, if the job has some prestige to it, it has some status to it, um, in the field that I'm in, and it is an actual job with attorney in the title, which is what I couldn't say for a lot of the work that I did <laughs> after I got out of law school. Um, like I've been doing mostly, uh, most of the stuff I've done since I graduated has had a legal component to it. But, you know, like for example, I spent, when I was studying for the bar exam, I was also working, our apartment complex had a front desk. And so to help pay rent, you got paid in rent credit. So to help pay rent, I worked at that front desk. But they let me bring all my books and study at the front desk. Like, I, I, there was a lot of downtime, and I could do whatever I wanted. As long as I, you know, made sure people came in, I, you know, I'd help them, or if someone wanted to look at apartments, I would hit them up with the manager, that sort of thing. Um, and that ended up being a really interesting job, but it, it paid dirt. And like, after I passed the bar, I was doing that job while I was doing legal work. And I would bring legal related work to that front desk when i was doing all that medical document review for the first year or two that i did that i was still working at that job at the front desk and i would bring my laptop down and i'd be i bring stack of documents and the management was just cool about it i was like all right i'm gonna do this i'll be making more money at with this all this crap that i've dragged down to this desk than i am actually working at the desk um but then I have all sorts of crazy stories from managing that building. It was such a quirky building. And I and I look back at that job and that place and that time with a lot of fondness in many ways. It's just not the kind of experience that a lot of people have. So while I had this real kind of screwball progression, uh, I, I look back at the, ex the experiences that I have with, with some degree of fondness. I don't look back and go, oh, man. My life sucked. You know, it's just like, oh, this is very interesting. You know how to make your own choices and take your own path. You definitely deserve more people to sub. You're going to be here more often. Well, I, pre I appreciate that alone. I don't think I gave you any good answers aside from like, hey, I'm 46 and I still, I don't know what the hell to tell you. Um, I could give you some canned, like either people have canned answers. It was like, you know, figure out what you're passionate about and then pursue it and, you know, work hard. And there's, but those are, that's not bad advice, but it's also like, it's what everyone says to do. And it's not a magic bullet that like, Hey, that's just figure out what you're passionate about and do that. That's a very hard ask for a lot of people. Yeah. Sometimes I play games. And 45, once in a while, for 45 seconds straight. 45 seconds of gameplay. That's, usually I play that to warn people when I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to do something in this game now that actually is going to require me to pay attention. And I think what I came here for was this, I've never been to this town before. I was going to look for trainers. Yeah, there it is. Uh, fan favorite right there and i like it myself too that was during my inspired golden the golden age of g-law mm. okay here we go i need to get oh was it up here Oh, that's the innkeeper. No, I need to go around. There's some trainers up yonder. This is a really cool looking town, though. This is if I'm if I'm going to find another town to spend four hours slowly wandering around in and not playing a game. This is the kind of town that is worthy of of. <laughs> it's like the, the four hours in Riften, you know? Another four hours in Riften situation. <laughs> hey James, I, I, I've, hey James, I feel like you, uh, 
I feel like you actually mean that though. Like you're like, yeah, this is this is cool. And that's one of the reasons why I ended up playing games like Skyrim for so long is because I liked that too. It was more like I'm hanging out with my friends and I'm doing it while I'm in the world of Skyrim. That was sort of, and sometimes I paid attention to what I was doing in game. A lot of times it was like, literally, I'm just wandering around. I'm not trying to do anything in this world aside from be here while I talk to you guys. <laughs> Um, this game is really gra- yeah, the graphics are, are harsh. It, you know, honestly, I got- I upgraded my PC last year, and now it runs really well, but it was running a little rough on my last PC, which was a decent- it was an aging, but decent, what would probably be considered mid-range-ish, uh, gaming PC. Uh, but yeah, the- the problem is that it's an indie game, and in some ways it's not extremely well optimized. So, but yeah, no, I love Skyrim. Sky alone, uh, Skyrim is one of my favorite games of all time. If you if you look on my Steam library, it's like right up. It's one of my most played games. I think certain other games, like maybe Civ Four, tallied more hours over a Civ game. But it, I'm trying to remember. The thing is, is I played Skyrim and then I played Skyrim Special Edition, and I think if you added those both together, it would be. Skyrim would be my most played game on Steam. Oh, you finally got the money to upgrade. Whew. Um, it's, it's hard to recommend because a lot of what it is is just looking at like price for performance and that can change what's, that can change a lot. So I think I've, do I have the specs? my specs in the description pretty sure i have my current specs in there all the way at the bottom so for me this was i found one of those sites where you could where you can do pc build and i was like what would happen if i just really pushed to the limits and I didn't necessarily have to get the most single most powerful graphics card, but like something right in arm's reach of that. And maybe not the most powerful GPU, but something right in arm's length of that. And, and or a uh, CPU, yeah. And basically a CPU is pretty much like at the time was essentially the most powerful regular market CPU uh, family that you could get. Eight gigs. I would at this point, I would at this point recommend 16. Um, because I've already encountered games that would make eight gigs choke. And the re, you know, you could you could still play the vast majority of games with eight gigs, but you know, one of my thoughts too is when you're gonna if you're dumping the money in one in one chunk, it could be worth it with between eight and 16, I got, I went 32. But for me, that's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you might drop an extra 40 bucks on that, on that RAM to get from, from 16 or from eight to 16. But it's one of those things that is probably gonna be worth it because you wanna, you wanna get something that can run things well, run as many things well now as possible, but also with the anticipation that over the next two, three, four years, um, you will be able to continue playing games, maybe not always on max settings, but you'll be able to keep playing games in a, in a functional manner as they, as new games come out over the next few years. And you might upgrade a video card. Like I did that on my last computer and that, you, you know, I spent my last computer. I spent about 900 bucks on, I built it myself. And I think the Two, like three years in, I got a new graphics card. I dropped about 200 on a new graphics card. And then the next year I dropped about, I don't know, 80 bucks on, on like upgrading my RAM. And that, those are really the only major, the only big expenses I had. And it was, it was still, I mean, it's still a pretty decent PC. I still have it. Um, but this is, this one's a hell of a lot better. But yeah, so, but my philosophy was, and then I found a website 
for Cyber PC. I think it was Cyber Power PC, where you can customize builds and they build it for you. And I was like, at this point, I can afford. It turns out it was going to be an extra hundred bucks for my basically what I considered my dream build. Uh, it'd be an extra hundred bucks to have a professional company build that for me and ship it to me. And so I that's what I ended up doing. But yeah, I mean, you got to sort of figure out how much you're willing to spend. And typically you want to you want to push a little more to the outer limits, but you also want to want to pay attention to what are good deals like, you know, find sites that compare prices and sites that analyze cost to performance ratios and that sort of thing of like which graphics cards are going to work the best for you and so on. Oh, RAM on the GPU. Oh, shit. Okay. I, 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 you said that and I missed it, Mike. You said it the first time and I missed it. Yeah. Yeah, 16. I've got 32 as well. And I think my motherboard is upgradable to... It might be 128. I can't remember if it's 64 or 128. But it's upgradable to like a ridiculous amount of RAM. I don't think I've used anything that... I've had anything that uses 32. But I know a couple games, I think Kenshi might have pushed past that 16 gigs of RAM. But there are certain games that will do it. And it's usually games that are trying to do a lot of crazy, like, unusual stuff. You got the balls to buy the parts and assemble it on my own? I Over the years, I bought a lot. I bought, like, store PCs and then swapped out parts, and I got pretty comfortable with that. I got to admit, when I put my PC together all on my own, I was white knuckling it a little bit. Um, there were several points where I thought I completely screwed my computer up. And I thought I ruined everything. These these soul crushing moments where and where I thought, oh, my God, I think I just I just I just destroyed the CPU or everything when i first the first time i turned it on it made a horrible noise and i was like oh my god something yeah i it was very and it took me i think it took me about a day and a half like altogether it probably took me about 16 hours because i was so cautious and i was looking up videos for every step of the way to like see people doing it pausing it and watching it over again and pausing and if something would happen i wouldn't be sure about and i would look up forums or they talked about that like when the, when you push the, the cpu into its its casing on the on the motherboard it's it like you have to do it hard and it the motherboard like creaks like it's gonna break and i'm like oh my god i don't want to push it that hard it's just, it, it doesn't seem right that it's supposed to be that hard i feel like i'm gonna i'm gonna just gonna break everything so there was all these moments that came up and it turns out that was at least at that time that was completely normal uh, I found out, but there's, there's many points along the way where I'm like, oh my god, no, I, this is, yeah, it was a little harrowing, I'll be, it was a little harrowing. You build gaming rigs, CPU 6 core, 12 threads, GPU at least 8 gigs, 16 gigs memory, that would be, sorry, yeah. That seems reasonable. Although I do spend a lot of time looking at particular, um, Benchmark analyses like I don't necessarily know the, how the benchmarks themselves work, but I'll, I'll look at people that do so they can analyze the performance level of different of different uh, CPUs because sometimes the stuff that sounds like 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 for example like a six core Processor from AMD and a six core versus a six core processor from Intel um, and depending on which line, which family of processor that's in, they're not going to do the same thing. Um, so sometimes, like, I feel like some of those, like, 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 rules like what Mike just said, which are probably good, like, general things to keep in mind, 
But before you pull the trigger on anything, I would recommend like looking to some of those sites that do the deep dive because sometimes the numbers might start looking all the same to you between different options, but one will be a like a huge uh, a huge step above the other one. Yeah, I'm like, oh, they're not that delicate. I was so freaked out. I'm like, I'm, I was always like, I'm going to break it. I'm break. I think I, I think I messed it up. <laughs> All right, now it's nighttime again. Here, let's find that. Let me find, I made a little camp here in town. And it was, it was somewhat near. Where did I make my camp? I think it was over here. Are my campfire still going? Ah, they're burning pretty low. Here, we'll get them. We'll get them uh, fired up. Hayes, he just needs some water. Although, I am eventually going to need to get some more food. The water is not a problem. Because water is easy to come by. And there's a, there's a well, I think it's right here. I think I want to gather... A couple of skins worth though. I can drink some. And why am I wandering around? Here we go. I've got enough oil that I can afford not to be wandering around in the dark. Some sort of shady character. Yeah, this is my first time to this town. And you can eventually buy a home, but I think you have to progress the faction quest. And I talked about that earlier. I'm very intentionally not progressing for the main story, like the faction stories, because there's something that will happen that if you're not ready for it, can really screw up your game. Like there's something you're supposed to, it'll pop up that you need to prevent. And if you're not ready to be able to do that, um, there's this is the kind of game where it's like, well, now you gotta live with these consequences and the rest of your game from now on, now it's gonna be like this. It's like, okay, well, no. So this playthrough, I'm very carefully not progressing the main story so that I don't trigger that countdown until I'm ready for it. Oh, one home. I thought you you could get a home in each town eventually. Okay, because I, yeah. Well, I have a home. I have a home in one of the towns that you start with. So what happens if you choose another faction? Or do you no longer, do you lose your home that you start the game with? I didn't know that. Let me see. Oh, I got so much water now. Oh, yeah, I was going to make the potion. The astral potion. Wow, I didn't realize I picked up that many of these uh, termips. Okay. So. Okay, so you end up with two homes. And there's three faction towns, right? So that means you end up with a home in two out of three of the major. Oh, wait, there's three faction hubs. Never mind. Because your hometown is not a faction hub, even though it's associated with a faction. All right. Well, it looks like it's time to uh, time to hit the old hay again. We spend another whole day just wandering around town. Maybe I'll put it up here. The cooler up here. I know if you if I put my tent down too close to the fire, I wake up like borderline heat stroking. Not cool. So, and this game, I believe it is on sale on Steam right now, too. Am I already... Okay, let's get out. Let's not go to bed hungry. Let's eat. Uh, this, this is going bad. All right.
Okay. Well, do you, Mike, did you find a way to solve the storage issue? Like, I heard people throwing down backpacks, extra backpacks to use as storage, but that it's really... It's like a real pain in the butt to swap out items that way. Because it's not intended to serve that function. But is there some thing, some mechanic in game that I'm not aware of that addresses like an actual legitimate storage in towns you don't own property in? Or is it just like, hey, there's these two towns and that's the only place, these are all the only places where you have a storage chest. So wherever you are in the world, when your bags get full, you've got to drag your ass back to the other part of the world to, to get to a storage box. Okay, so yeah, it's just one of those things that you just gotta, it's like, well, yep, that's your option, so you do it. Ah. Uh. All right, now I'm gonna go t find those faction, tr the, the uh, trainers. And then, how's my 60 out of 75? I'm either going to have to... I may just need to sell some stuff. Steel shield? I think I just need to sell some stuff that I'm not going to use. I need to get over the fact that... Like, oh, look at all these arrows I got. Those will be handy someday. When I, I don't... I rarely ever burn through that many arrows. It's going bad. <laughs> All right. Are these the trainers? There was a... Uh, I don't have magic yet. In this game, to get magic, you can see on the bottom left, I've got a health bar and a stamina bar. In order to get magic, you have to go to a special place. It's really hard to get to. And... You just have to sacrifice your, like, your physical attributes in order to gain mana. And so the more you invest in mana, the weaker your physical stats will get. And I haven't settled in on what my endgame is for magic. But I do know that before I can afford to actually buy spells in any significant way, um, I'm not going to start investing in mana because I'm not going to be able to, to afford the skills that I'd use it for. Brad Pritchard? Hey, Caw! What's up, Brad? It's good to see you. I've been uh, loosely following Brad's Super Mega Baseball 3 uh, franchise that he's been... Brad, you've been... Uh, you've been extremely YouTube content active for the last several weeks. It's been kind of cool to see. I do, I do pop in and, like, lurk your stuff sometimes. I, I won't lie and say I watch everything you put out, but um, I, I do I do put on your I put on your stuff sometimes because you play interesting games and 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 you're Brad internet celebrity Brad Pritchard I should make friend <laughs> make friends All right, let's see with this guy Hey there Well, see, that's the thing is, like, I think I watched one of those. And because I was curious about the game. But I've watched a couple of your Super Mega Baseball ones because that, like, you you take this, like, announcer type role. And there's just a lot of... There, there, I, there, it brings a lot of spirit. You bring a lot of spirit to it when... This and that's happening. I could feel like, oh, you're invested in what's going on, and it's just there's a there's just a fun vibe to watching you play that game. So I've been I've been lurking a few few more of those. So, it would Mike, on your experience, is it worth like every character investing at least a bit into mana, even if you want to be uh, a melee person? I think I haven't seen you get that that salty, or if you did, I wasn't taking it that way. 
because I watched the. I think there was one where your audio wasn't working, and and that was the most recent one. And and I went back to the one before that, and that's the one that I commented on where. Or the sirloins, they you won the World Series. It was this great proud moment, at the end. The team, the team looked just so ecstatic, and they're running across the field, and the whole, the whole field, the bleachers going crazy with flashing lights and everything, and it was just this real like. I got this real sense watching you play that that this was an accomplishment, and that you 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 were feeling it, and that your team was feeling it, and I was like, yeah, this is cool. And then your one, and then one of your new players quit because they weren't getting enough money. <laughs> ah. Pure melee, but found a melee, but found that a bit of mana was great later. Okay, okay. And two Irish girls. Hello, how you doing? Long time no see. How you guys? How you guys hanging in there these days? It's been a while since yeah, two Irish girls. I think a lot of you would probably remember them. The people who've been around for a while. Back in my Skyrim days, the two Irish girls, it's a mother and a daughter. Um, and we're very, very fascinated and interested in Skyrim. And I think during that time, you actually did you buy a console in order to, to play Skyrim? Um because I remember you you were watching it a lot and you wanted to play it and you were trying to figure out the best the best way to play it. And I think I remember recommending if you weren't a gamer at all to go console because there's there's less to learn and worry about. <laughs> PS4, okay. No, that's good. I I can do that. I can do that. I might even recommend it the PS4 in particular. Because that's if I had to even put a gun to my head, that's probably the uh Well I'll be Nintendo would be would be tempting as well but if i got if you put a go if, if it's something something that would play skyrim well ps4 is just uh would have been very tempting yeah th that one looks great too that's only on ps4 there's a lot of stuff on ps4 like everyone now is so hyped uh this midnight tonight uh the last of us 2 is is unlocking so i've had a, a at least a couple people in here tonight that are just doing a pee pee dance with excitement for just waiting for that to unlock so they can play it um and that's another series that's only on the playstation 4 like that new spider-man the spider-man game for i guess it's a couple years now that's a game that i was like wow that game looks really cool only on playstation um yeah so there's there's probably more games that are just exclusive to playstation that interests me a lot more than the uh, Xbox exclusives. And Xbox also, a lot of their, I mean, most games I can play on PC across all platforms. So that's why I stick with PC, but yeah. Oh yeah, no, my gaming was consoles to begin with. We had an Intellivision. It was like the Atari 2600, one of their competitors back in 1979 my first console and then I got a Nintendo Master System back in like 1988 I think and then I had the I don't know if I ever got the Sega Master System I had a friend that had the Sega Master System and I thought it was really cool it was like the Sega's counterpart to the original Nintendo and then what was the next thing I should eat have that alpha jerky. Mm -mm. Good. Good stuff. Alpha jerky. Now I'm going on a journey of my past consoles. I had the Intellivision was was a, I loved that console and that, and that I thought it was better than Atari, but Atari had a lot more games and a lot of the games on Atari, even though the graphics were crap, were a lot of fun. So I, w I was always jealous that I like I had knew lots of people that had Ataris and I didn't have one but overall I felt like the Intellivision was had better quality games a better technically better con like console Bedlam I don't remember that so and then around the time I think r right around when I got the Nintendo or before 
is when we got our first home computer and we had an Apple IIc. And it was not for me, but I was allowed to use it. And, you know, I think my dad had aspirations of like doing all sorts of, you know, he was into finance, the world of finance and business and that, yeah, I think he had aspirations of doing amazing things on that computer. And he, he messed around with it a couple hours, a couple times and was like, nah. And then it turned out like, cause there were little games I could play on there. I was really the only one who ever had any kind of ongoing interest on that computer. And there were a few little games. There was a game called Load Runner that I liked, where it's like a like a mining type weird kind of little game. And there were a few different cool games that were on there, but it was really the big the big one was uh, Ultima Four. Like from that time, that was the big historic thing. It was my first computer role playing game and it blew me away. I, I loved like at that point I was at an age where I liked Dungeons and Dragons and the the fact that you could run around with characters and they had stats and hit points and you levels and experience and they could get better weapons and oh, it's just I, I that just blew me away. Like this this huge huge epic world exploring adventure. I never I never imagined anything like that. I was just like fascinated by it. So that was like one of my first major wow, like life altering gaming experiences it was going from little games where you're just a little dude jumping, jumping around monsters and swinging, you know, whatever to playing this real like legit RPG. Oregon Trail, okay. I never, that was what I never played. We had that on our computers at school. There were like a couple games on our school computers and I always played the other one. <laughs> I can't even remember what it was now. I know I played Taipei or Ta Taipan when I was in junior high. I got into that for a while. You played with six? Yeah, it was a bit it was a bit more polished or advanced by six. Um, and four would, was, it was like you were the avatar, you were from this world, but you were drawn into that world. And the whole plot was about like the land was ailing because people just had, had given up hope and they needed someone to be an example for them of of the virtues and, and they, they had a system was almost like a religion where it was like the virtues of honesty and and valor and com I'm trying to think the different ones because then there, there was like this whole system where it was like honesty and compassion would combine into like a more advanced trait that was honor or something. And it was this really elaborate system where you had to unlock all the shrines of these virtues that was going to set the world back in the right direction. And it kept track of stuff you did. Like if you ran away from battle, it would hurt your valor score. And if you gave money to the poor, there was it was keeping a tally somewhere in the background of your compassion virtue. Uh... And it was just, I mean, even now looking back to think that that was in a game that was designed in like 1985, it's pretty amazing. Like that, you know, nothing has really been like that before. Red Baron of the Inn. I'm not, I'm, Maria 59 rings a bell, but I don't think I ever played any of those games. Oh, Bedlam was text only. Okay, I never got into text only games. Virtues of Ultima. But yeah, Ultima was a big deal. But yeah, I got into it. And then there was, you know, Nintendo came out and like like Final Fantasy and I liked all sorts of games, but I always tended towards RPGs as like the ones that I ended up bonding the most with. All right, Final Fantasy I got really into, but some it was really grindy. So there was some part of me that was at the same time kind of like, eh, it's cool, but it's a little boring. Very samey. Everything felt the same.
So, and then the cool thing was in Ultima 5, they turned that whole thing on its head. But every time you came back to the world, like a significant amount of time would have passed. But there was still, they lived longer there. So there'd be a lot of the same characters. You'd end up with the same people in your party and so on. Wow, these berries. I didn't realize I had all these berries on me. Anyway, if those berries are just gonna go, is this gonna go bad? I just realized I've got a stack of berries that are that are about to spoil. And I think I can I can turn them into jam real quick. <laughs> well, Ultima 5 turned it all on his head. You come back and there's this evil like Jafar like character that's taken over the kingdom. Kingdom's run by Lord British. And he's in every game. He was the king of Britannia. That was the name of, of the of the land that you go to in the Ultima games. And you go back, and it was the same overall like world map and the t same towns and everything. And each town stood for a different basic virtue. And you got there, and everything was really backwards and oppressive. And all of the virtues had been turned to their extremes, like um, honesty. The town of honesty was like, tell a lie, we cut out your tongue. Uh, you know, uh, th that sort of thing where everything is super, the, the thing about charity, it's like if you, or I forget which virtue, but there's one that if you steal, uh, if you steal, then it death. And at the meantime, he's jacked up the, the taxes. So everybody's impoverished and. Um, uh, it was a really interesting, compelling story. And in the background, there's this thing going on with these, the, the, with these dark creatures that are like Nazgul's or Dementors that would, would cycle through and visit these various towns. And if you happen to go to a town when those things were there, it was like game over. You just, well, you just had to stay away. You just knew like, oh, sh you'd walk, you'd approach town and you'd be like, something would alert you to the fact that things weren't right there. And unless you were real powerful, it's like, nope, you just turn your ass around and leave. You, this town's closed right now. Yeah, Bertel Crondor was, uh, that's an interesting one, too. I actually have that. I have that from GOG. I've tried a couple times over the past, like, recent years to get into it. All right. Now what I need to do is go back, get some bread, and I can turn this jam into, like, jam bread. I can stock up on that, and that can be my... It's light... It's lightweight food that's cheap to put together so that I don't have to worry so much about how much time I'm wasting just getting hungry here. Is this the person that has bread? You? No. There's, like, a food vendor I need to find. I think it's on the other side here. Pardon me? Um, it got you addicted to Skyrim? No, Skyrim is awesome. Like, I, I played it so much I do get burned out on it, but Skyrim is like... Not, every, help not you? everyone loves it. I'll admit, I met, I've met enough people that haven't felt the same way that I realize it's not everyone loves it, but... Skyrim is like, that whole series is, another, is a very another, to me, very special series. Uh, yeah, let's... How many jams did I make? I only made two jams? No, four. I have four jams. So I'm gonna get four loaves of bread. Yeah. I'll take that. Do they have any recipes that involve anything that I killed? Marshmallow jelly. Oh... Now, I don't want to drop 50 bucks on this stuff right now because I don't have that much money, but like this, this is like an upgraded version of what I'm making right now. Huh. All right, I'm going to go back to my little camp. So this game, is it PC only? You know what? I think it is, but I'm not 100% sure. Let me look it up. Outward. Uh, 
Um, no, it says PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Microsoft Windows, Linux, Mac, and Macintosh. So it's 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 available on everything. It's an indie game, Astaroth. Matus, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, there we go. And wasn't it like you had to learn their names? And once you learned their names, you could... You could tell them, like, you could defeat them then. Uh, and I don't know if it's going to be the same on consoles, like two Irish girls. But if you feel like this seems, it's a rough, it's a little bit of a rough game. It's a little, it's a, it's an indie game. It's made by Nine Point Studios. And that means it's actually like nine people. There's the whole studio. So when you get playing around with it, you're going to, you're going to feel that nine the dev team nest to it i mean given that there's nine people that did this it's an amazing accomplishment but it, it does some interesting stuff but it's very focused on hunger you have to stay hunger you, you thirst fatigue carrying weight so you can see my pocket has up to 10 pounds and if i didn't have a backpack if i carry more than 10 pounds of stuff i it starts slowing down a lot. Um, I've been upgraded. My first backpack could carry up to 25 pounds. And then I got one that did 50. And I got one that did 75. But the the more... Uh, the bigger backpack you have, the more it'll slow you down if you try and fight. So, like, if I'm fighting and I do a roll, it's super slow. But then there's a mechanic to quickly drop the backpack. So this is, like, your gear you carry around in your rest of your home. I got my tent. Got my, you know my survival gear and you can just when you're gonna fight you're like okay i gotta drop i can't have all that that on me so now it's like now you can you're a lot more mobile and when you're done you pick it back up again so you know skyrim you can get mods that will introduce stuff like hunger and things like that but this game is very much built around those and I, and the reason i'm bringing all that up is because that those mechanics that make the game like where you got to worry about a lot more things and also the combat's hard you need, you can die very quickly when things hit you and the combat's also a little there's a lot about this game that's a little rough but for people who like what it brings that other games don't it's a really can be a really cool game um so yeah, but I bring all that stuff up because it's definitely like, it's not like, hey, if you like Skyrim, you'll like this game. Not even this. this no, it's a totally like there are things I like about this game for the same reasons that I like Skyrim, but they're very different games. She's playing the SR. Which ones are the SR mods? Yeah, I mean, and look into it. Look, look at a couple reviews for it, too, before you buy it. But I was going to also mention, they just released the first DLC for this game. Like, I think it came out today. And, uh... And I, I know, at least on Steam on PC, there's a pretty deep sale on this game right now. And if the developer is running a similar promotion across platforms... You might be able to get this game for 15 bucks or so right now. The base game. So, you know, it if you if it looks interesting to you, at some point like now or over the next few days like the weekend or whatever, I mean, you might want to look, look watch a couple of reviews about it and take a look and see if you think like, "Hey, maybe I would like that" or, you know, like, "You know what? I that that it I mean, it looks neat at a glance, but I don't know." Yeah, it's worth it's, it's worth investigating though, especially since it's on sale. You might look in, you might just investigate it, take give it a closer look. Uh, and I'm hungry again. May have some more of that. Oh wait, did I? I didn't actually make the jam bread that I was planning to make. I made the jelly. Now I got to make jam bread out of it. It's one bread, one jam. Each one of those makes a stack of three of those. So now I've got 
Oh. I should have eaten the ones or gotten rid of the ones I had left because they stacked. That's kind of screwy. The whole stack is now almost spoiled because the couple that I had left in my inventory were almost spoiled. That depresses me. So you can see too, as I'm standing by these fires, there's a temperature gauge that's going up and I can actually get overheated, which if you're in a if you're in combat overheated, it can be problems. And I think it actually, if you get too hot, you can eventually get, have like uh, heat illnesses or heat strokes. So if you're going into a, like a desert area, you got to wear lighter armor. Um, this particular armor is actually made to actually help keep you a little bit warm. Uh, certain zones have seasons. Like my home zone has seasons where it'll turn winter and when it comes winter, um, you've got to be, you got to bring like different types of foods that, that help keep you warm. And you got to make sure you're wearing stuff like this that'll help keep you warm. The jam bread actually it helps keep you warm. It, the jam itself, one of the effects of the jam is that it helps, it gives you a, a boost to cold resistance. And it basically is enough to where, it only lasts a few minutes, but it's to where if you carry a stack of jam bread around with you and you're running around in winter, it'll halt you from freezing as long as you have that with you. Um, the hardcore sh shit makes you want to play it. Well, see, that's the thing. That was, uh, to me, that's appealing. But I was having, like, a talk with Nick about this the other day. And Nick's like, yeah, that sounds terrible. Like, he, he loves Skyrim. But he goes into these games to escape. He doesn't want to have to deal with that level of bullshit, you know? <laughs> Oh, Creation Club. Okay. That, yeah, if you're not... Well, I guess on PS4, that's probably a great way to go, because modding... Modding otherwise is probably a little bit tricky. And Creation Club is a nice alternative for people that don't want to be monkeying around with... Ah, like, doing mods manually can get a little bit tricky. So, for people that want to get into modding and don't mind dropping a few bucks here and there probably takes a lot of the headache and and worry out of modding so yeah a lot of people were upset about the creation club because they looked at it like bethesda was like cashing in but really they've they've allowed private free mods they didn't have any interfere with them and uh and i think the creation club has its place for people for the right people you know uh, yeah, I think I got Ultima 4 for free on GOG. I, I launched it and I was like, oh, this feels so rough now. It felt like you had for each spell, you had to go out and get the right reagents for it. And then each spell had a combination of magic words that you had to type. Every time you casted a spell, you had to open like the chat line and type those words to make the spell cast. And I started playing it again, and when I realized, like, oh, yeah, I think that now the, the plus side is Ultima may be the game that actually got me familiar with a keyboard. Which eventually was helpful when I learned formally how to type. Um, and it was because you had to type in those damn words for every spell you casted. Oh, is that five? I knew it was one of those. Modding. OK, that's the thing, too is the space concerns, which aren't that big a deal on like a PC hard drive, but the console's hard drive space tends to be a bit more limited. It causes lagging. Oh. Let's see. I, well, yeah, they can't. I know they're on PC. It's very much a trade off where people with high end systems, like every type of mod that affects graphics, they'll say what kind of performance impact it has. And I know there are definitely mods where I'm like, yeah, that looks like that would make things look a little bit cooler, but it's not worth putting in if my game's gonna be choppy to run. So it's always, you always, and, and sometimes it's like, well, let's install it and see what happens. And you install it and you'd be like, oh, that's not so bad. 
You know, there's just a lot of playing around. And then sometimes, you know, with private mods, they would conflict with each other in weird ways. And there's a lot of really kind of little things that can go wrong. I didn't know about a mod where you turn into a dragon, though. Invas Grav Corp. Summon great energy of death. And I forget, could you experiment and just, like, make up spells based on the words and see what happened? In four, you mix this right and then build them out of combat so you had a certain amount. It's been so, I mean, literally, I launched four maybe five to ten years ago when I got it free on GOG, and I probably literally played it for 15 minutes before I was like, yeah, I have a lot of nostalgia for this game, but I don't know if I'm up for this. <laughs> You'd only use dedicate the dedicated combos, okay. It causes you to error on the PS4 home screen. Okay. So you have problems with mods there too. Even with the workshop mods, huh? I guess if you just put too many on or the wrong combination or that sort of thing. Force combat is harsh till you get a ranged weapon on everyone. Melee is awful. I I remember having to restart a lot. I remember dying a lot, but I didn't have a, any kind of comparison to call whether a game was harsh or not. So I just know I had a lot of, because I was so enamored to be able to play a game like that, which blew my mind, I had a lot of patience to, and it's turn-based, like grid combat where you move the characters around like space by space and yeah i i really enjoyed it but i don't know if i could i don't know if i could play through it again we played this game for a couple of years when one of the mods got corrupted and what oh yeah one reason i haven't played it again is because i moved to a new pc and i know that my save games are from my last playthrough i could port them over but they are reliant on a lot of mods and some of those mods are such that they warn you once you install them into your game um you your game may become unstable if you take them out again so only install this mod if you know you want it to be the rest be present for the rest of that game that save or you know buyer beware so i haven't played i i haven't played and that's same for fallout as well uh and more particularly for fallout 4 because i've beat the hell out of skyrim but fallout i there's still a ton of content i haven't done yet and that i mean to go back to but i'm gonna basically need to start over and part of me is like even though it's been a couple years part of me is like i don't i gotta wait till i'm ready to take it on from the start like there's some part of me that's still like i don't want to like i put so much time into it already but it's been long enough that i even if i could i probably should just start over but yeah anyway boring the shepherd couldn't use ranged weapon oh get them poison let them die keep them dead because they were so annoying couldn't you did you have to have them all in your group i can't remember that now because as your party grew did you have all like nine people in the group at once and i remember making heavy use of the warrior but what are the worst mods oh mods are mods are just it's completely dealer's choice or not dealer's choice player's choice Man, it just depends on what you want and what you don't want. In terms of what what can mess up your game, if that worse in that sense, it's hard to say. Uh, because there are a lot of mods that do a lot of complicated things, and with the complications that tend to happen more, is when you start piling mod upon mod upon mod, and certain things that one mod does wasn't anticipated by the other mod. And when they both happen at the same time, your game can break. But it can be very hard to predict. Unless sometimes 
the mod developers will identify certain mods like you can't play this with that mod and it's compatible with this other mod if you install this compatibility patch you know there's it just can get very complicated but as for like what's best and worst just in general it sort of really depends on what how you want the game to be changed you know you can make the game into a lot of different to feel a lot of different ways depending on what you like or what you want to you want to see you know so I can say the kind of mods that I liked were immersion type mods like this game with the food and the drink and all that stuff is I I enjoyed the mods in Skyrim there's camping mods there's uh there's hunger and food and drink realistic needs mods I like that stuff so and one of the things that I really enjoyed was you know you're out in Skyrim and like the sun goes down and it gets dark it's like you got to think about hey I got to find a place to sleep and you can have a tent on you and pitch, you know but maybe you need to get back to get back to town and you know and suddenly inns mean a lot more the inns are a little bit, a little bit more important um you know and in one sense it's not a huge deal because you can you can easily run from one town to another very quickly in skyrim but just that that extra layer of immersion i that i enjoyed it's one of the appeals of this game You just want the mods added to a new game. Yeah, it could be. It, it's really, it's really just a matter of looking over. Like what I'll usually do, and I haven't used Creation Workshop, so I don't know how you can sort it. But the mods on PC, there's a there's a website that I use called Mod Nexus, that is sort of seems like the biggest central location for mods, like non Steam, non Creation Club mods, and um. I'll just go there and I'll sort them by highest rated or most downloaded. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And I'll see what, what's been over the past six months, the most, the highest rated mods. And then, and I'll just look over those and just see like, oh, is that, th that looks interesting. Nope, not interested, not interested. Oh, that looks interesting. Too much, I gotcha, too many. Atmosphere and home mods. Yeah, all right. Ultimate years was just light years ahead. It actually had a date. Yeah. Wait, did four not have day night cycle? I for I had forgotten that. But I I remember that being a thing. Like when it got dark, your your vision narrowed down. And I forgot about that. Yeah, like they'd lock up their shops if you showed up. And I think there were, if towns had gates, would they not let you in after dark? I just remember that that was a thing. This feeling of being caught out out of town and not like having got a hotel room or get, had a room at the end before it got dark. It was like, I really... And you get tired in, in Ultima 5? Did you need to sleep? I want to say you did. I can't remember. Bethesda needs to do a player's choice. Are you talking about... Yeah, so I don't know how Creation Club works in terms of how you can sort them. So, but that's always, that's one of the main things that I would look at. And then I spent time looking at just videos. There are a lot of content creators that, there are some content creators that all they do is focus on YouTube on reviewing mods as they come out. And, and that's the thing too, is I don't know, I don't know if there's a lot of, as much help when it comes to Creation Club focused mods. Um, but I know I've spent a number I spent a lot of time over the years just watching other people like talk about like what the, they think the best mods are and how different combinations of mods can transform your gaming experience according to a certain theme. CC is too much. Nexus mod did a great job that Bethesda took too long to do. Yeah, I'm not... I couldn't really compare it. Um, I feel like Nexus is a great... And they do mods for all sorts of different games. Um, but I think that's a great hub. 
and a, and a great place to like sort through mods and and uh it's where a lot of the mod authors like have put the most of their effort into keeping games like their mods up to date and that sort of thing whittle creeps man you're lucky i'm still here whittle creeps because it's, ten, it's almost 10 30. i can't stream late these days i don't know two irish girls i don't know when the last time you were here is but i used to stream a lot later but now i work i've grown up job well i was working before but i worked from home and i set my own hours so i used to stream till like midnight at one in the morning and I can't do that anymore. I'm in, uh, I'm still on the uh, West Coast of the United States. So, like, right now it's 1030. But I've got to be up. Um, I usually get up between, like, 6 and 7. So, I actually need to think about getting the hell out of here. Whittle Creeps, you re it was you that reminded me. It's like, oh, crap, if Whittle Creeps is here, that means I probably should go to bed. Yeah, no, my guy, I keep getting notifications that I'm hungry and thirsty. I'm managing. But the problem is, is I've been doing this so long, my... Oh, no, my, my food's okay. You just lose one at a time? All right. I'm not sure how the rotting system works. I thought the whole stack was about to go bad, but I think I just lost the top one. You're still owls? Yeah, I used to... On stream nights, a lot of times I'd end up being up till two or three in the morning routinely. Um, but now it's like, it's like usually I'm out by now. Usually, I, I sort of look at ten o'clock as quitting time, but depending on the day, there are times when I've stopped streaming at nine thirty. Um, you know, it'd be like an hour earlier than now, and it's just because. But the job that I have requires a lot of focus. And it can be kind of intense sometimes, so it's like it can be kind. Of, it can be complicated, and it's not the kind of job that I can, I can, I can go in on a half a night's sleep and just do an autopilot. I just can't. It, I wouldn't be able to do that the job that way. So, well, it's been cool to see you. I was glad to see you again, and uh, yeah, I may be looking at this game. I'm not going to guarantee it'll be your cup of tea, but let me turn my. Uh, Eh, yeah, my lantern. And then you get in a fight. And the lantern stays on. <laughs> anyway, it's just cool stuff. Turn that off. You go into dungeons, you need that light. But then, if you're trying to be sneaky, you gotta turn it off. Because the light ruins your ability to sneak up on stuff. And it's just fun. I like the game. It's fun. But let's let's do this. Here, I can't just let this hang out in the background. I actually got it. See here, the start split. I guess I could have one person on keyboard and mouse and one person on my Xbox gamepad. I've never played it with anyone before, but there is local split screen co-op. That's another thing to consider. So if you if you have if you do get it on PS4 and it does seem like your type of game, you got two controllers. You can play it together. So that's one thing you can't do, at least not easily on Skyrim. And on PS4, I don't think you can do it all. Uh, yeah, that you clip to your the you clip to your hip in Skyrim. Yeah, I, that's one that I almost always get. I like that one. And uh, Mike, you have a good night. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually quit. Quit the game. And then we'll get to the... Oh, thank you. Put the thank you screen. And I'll still hang out for a few minutes. I just need to definitely start edging towards getting the heck out of here. Not that I was playing much game to begin with. I mostly was just... It was a don't starve while I'm talking simulator for the last hour or so. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's one of those games where you, you have your own... If you do it online, everyone has their own game. But... Someone can invite you can invite other like friends into your game And then they they're just in your they're in your world and they can join you in whatever you're doing I think they have to stay in the same zone um, And whatever they I think whatever they get 
if you're in someone else's game whatever you get you get to keep so money items if you buy skill learn skills stuff like that but any of like quests or story things that happen while you're in someone else's world that's only happening in their world uh 76 is i've sort of got my eye on 76 from a distance it got had such a terrible reputation that at launch that i've stayed away from it it was honestly always the way they pitched it i was always a little skeptical of it because it didn't feel like there was a lot of content and it seems like that's something over the past couple years that they've been addressing is trying to add more of the type of content that people were expecting it's still i haven't heard enough to make me think yeah time to go out and get fallout 76. um my thought is is whenever i start feeling a fallout itch because i tend to play games on my own anyway if i played fallout 76 i'd probably be tempted to just play by myself and so if I'm getting into Fallout mode and I haven't played Fallout, I've never finished Fallout 4. I never even touched the expansions with Nick, which Nick was kind enough to get me like the season pass for Fallout 4. Uh, if I get the itch to go back to a Fallout game, my first move is probably just going to be go back to Fallout 4 long before I get Fallout 76. So um, that's a long answer to a short question. Do I have Fallout 76? So the answer is no. Uh, yeah, you made it before the thanks splash screen, Whittle Creeps. PS4 would only allow it for 30 minutes? What? Allow what? Fallout 76 or split screen? It is made out of oblivion. Are you talking about Fallout 76? Um, if technically all of the Bethesda's games were made on bastardized engines that I believe were derived from Oblivion, not Oblivion, from Morrowind. I don't think they came from Daggerfall. They may, I was thinking may, maybe it's, they, they started with Daggerfall. I'm not positive though. I want to say they made a new engine for Morrowind and everything that they've done, Fallout and, uh, and Elder Scrolls has been a tweaked version of that engine. Oh, it's yeah. The repeating is a it's a glitch. It's a glitch. I use a third party um, site called Streamlabs. A lot of streamers use that for their notifi notifiers and their chat and everything else. And I, so, so, the people who have been in other chats tonight have confirmed that Streamlabs is just doing this to people tonight. So uh, I know you're not. You didn't type yes fifty times. You're like nothing I said was that exciting. <laughs> uh, I'm more paying attention to just the actual same chat that you're paying attention to. Um, yeah, Nick. It, well, Fallout 4 is, for me, is a perfect kind of game for streaming. The, the issue is, and I don't know why it hasn't been... I haven't really had an itch to play it. It could be that I've just... I played a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of Bethesda for like a year. And then at a certain point, I'm like, it's like Forrest Gump when he was running across back and forth across America for like years. And then one day, no one knew why he was doing it. And then one day he just stopped and they're like, well, why'd you stop? He's like, oh, I got tired and he just, well, I think I'll go home now. That's sort of a little bit what happened with Bethesda games. It's one of the reasons why, like I was playing, um, what the hell is that? Outer Worlds? Is that the one that uh, Obsidian made? That's a little bit like, it's a little bit like uh, Fallout in space. And I got that, and it was different enough that I was, I was, jamming on it for a little while, and then at a certain point, I was like, oh, I feel like I, this is just too much. The game that I played too much. Uh Oh, I know you're not spammy. No, no worries. No, but I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad you're conscientious of the fact that I wouldn't like it if someone were spamming like that. <laughs> yeah, no, I found uh, the same as Skyrim. Uh, I found Fallout 4 to be a, a good streaming game. Um, 
So if 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 it well, I'm gonna say when I get back into it. I don't know when it'll be because it's just honestly, I look at I have it installed. I've always had it installed. I bought my new PC. It's one of the games I almost immediately installed. It's always installed. Uh, I know I'm gonna have to start the game over. I'm gonna have to look, probably look back into mods because I want to look back into mods before I start a new game. Um, and it's just a question of like every time I look at it there's something else I'd, I want to play more. Even if I start getting a slight itch for it, there's always something else that I'm like, yeah, I'd rather play this. And it just hasn't been the game that's that's risen to the top of my what do I want to play impulse. It hasn't been there for, for a while. Let's see. And, and, and it has enough stuff to make me say, oh shit, that's true. You're making me think about it more, Nick, though, because honestly, like when I was streaming a lot of Skyrim before, I wasn't always playing Skyrim in my spare time. And maybe it's it could be the sort of thing where like I could re I could revert back to Fallout as just a cool game to stream. Like that's just that could be my streaming game. It, I could see it turn. I could see something like that evolving. When if I get enough in the right mood for it. Red Dead Redemption, I yeah I I finally when that came out on PC I got it. I played. I streamed it a couple times. I felt like Red Dead Redemption was a kind of game I could enjoy streaming, as long as I was not attempting to do anything story related, because when I was doing anything story related for me I want to pay attention it's hard I I honestly usually don't get immersed into games while I'm streaming uh, because we well, can see I wander back and forth in a town tonight and it was when I was getting to that town I was paying a bit of attention because I was getting lost and figuring out how to get to it because I've never been there before but you can see the way that my gaming experience is when I'm streaming it's like mostly I'm hanging out with people online and as a secondary activity that I'm doing at the same time I'm, I'm streaming a game that I'm playing and that, that's like a launching pad to talk about games to talk about the game that I'm playing um, to show you the stuff about the game that I'm playing and sometimes to actually just play a little bit play the game that I'm playing but if there's a game that I want to be like, hey, there's a story, I want to lose myself in that story and lose myself in that world, um, that's not going to happen on stream. Um, because the game is normally taking a backseat. Let's see. Oh, it's safe for work as long as you avoid the story. All right, heading out. All right, Whittle Creeps. Yeah, you like that? Uh, that I, I'm Bethesda's Forrest Gump? You probably said that five minutes ago. Um, You think the questionable scenes are bad enough to make it a stream problem? I don't know. I mean, I played Outlast and Outlast Whistleblower where somebody takes table saw to somebody's dick and it's like I, I'm not sure is it did they out does that get they outdo that in Red Dead I, I couldn't I couldn't say um but I feel like I've played a few games that had a couple that I had some kind of moments <laughs> but um no the main reason Red Dead and Red Dead's one that <laughs> sorry yeah, Outlast. It's a horror game that I play almost almost every Halloween Hawktober season. And there's this one sequence in Outlast where there's a sick dude you get in this area of an insane asylum. It's been taken over by the inmates. And there's this one like serial killer dude. A GTA questionable. It could be GTA. GTA is is one that I might I'm, I could be inclined to stay away from, like 
the main storyline because GTA plays so much on stereotypes that I like I enjoy those games but I do not want to invite discussion about those stereotypes into my streams. So that's an example of a game I might stay away from just because, you know, it's just like in real life, I've got all sorts of opinions and about like politics and everything else. And for the most part, I don't want any of that bubbling up during my streams. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want other people talking about those topics. So. Anyways, yeah. A brander or a clamper. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, well, well, good night. All right, <laughs> little creeps. But yeah, I'm Bethesda's Forrest Gump. You put that on there. If there was a if there was a movie poster for me with little comments from reviewers, one of them would be Bethesda's Forrest Gump. <laughs> um. But yeah, Red Dead, that's another one of those games that I looked forward to playing for years. And I almost bought consoles just for Red Dead Redemption. That was one of the biggest temptations for me is wanting to play those games. And then I finally got Red Dead Redemption 2. And I played the hell out of it insofar as I can play the hell out of a game with my current schedule. For about two or three weeks. And then I was I wasn't enjoying it as much. Like I just had played too much of it. And it was one of those games where I knew it was, I knew it was a really good game and I didn't want to be just playing it just to finish it. I wanted to make sure, because at the times when I was enjoying and savoring it, I was really enjoying and savoring it. And I wanted to make sure that I could as much as possible be appreciating the game in that way when I played it. And when I when I played it too much to where I wasn't feeling that way, I was like, okay, I need to put this down. Same thing with Skyrim. I did, it took me years to finish Skyrim. I kept having to put it down. 405 seconds of gameplay. When did that happen, Matus? Uh, only when I'm off stream. Yeah, my current off stream game is... Uh, Persona 4 Golden. Oh, the chat mirror. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Streamlabs thing. You were under enthused. So, well, eh, I'm gonna wrap up. Yeah, Matus, I don't know if you've been in any other streams. I almost thought you were maybe the one that told me. Somebody told me, though, that people using Streamlabs is just happening. Just happening to them. You want a lullaby, Nick? You guys need a lullaby? That's a nice... That's a nice transition, doing the lullaby, because you know I have a hard time saying goodbye. Luckily, Joss isn't here to sabotage me with interesting topics. Well, Nick, you're guilty of this, too. But you're being merciful with me instead of suggesting a lullaby <laughs> okay somebody who has popped into a few streams tonight alerted me to the fact that stream labs has been doing this to other people so i was like okay well i guess we'll just see what happens next one say what all right mick nick i got you wrong i had y'all wrong hey two irish girls don't you want a lullaby here, I'll say good night, but and even though where you are, it's uh, it's time to get up. But still, it's time, it's time for breakfast. But you still need your lullaby, right? And you save save the relaxation for tonight. Dim, so we dim the light, so it's nice and it's nice and dark and calm and soothing. And uh, you get real. Gotta just get a little closer. A little closer to the microphone here. Hey, see, we're getting a little, uh... 141 AM. I thought you were in Ireland. I guess I, I'm totally... I, that's why I assumed you were in Ireland. <laughs> but you're, now that I'm remembering, you're on, the, you're on the East Coast. Not in Ireland. You're just Irish, but not in Ireland. 
So wait, now you one one forty one a.m. You need you need uh, you need to go to sleep. So this lullaby is going to be super helpful for you. All right, so everyone, just take a take a deep breath. Just just relax. Enjoy the the, the darkness. Go to sleep and good night. Your eyes are getting so heavy. Go to sleep now to I wish girls Nox Iron Nick CJ Maxi Matus. Go to sleep, little creeps. I'll be waiting for you in your dreams.